In addition to the matchup on the field, Pat Jones and Barry Switzer are also Arkansas graduates, so there's a little bit of a rivalry there. Pat Jones knows full well the importance of this game to the seniors on his club. As for Oklahoma State, this is a team with a bunch of seniors that has never beaten Oklahoma. They want to turn that around at home in Stillwater. Uh, anytime Oklahoma and Oklahoma State play uh, the in-state rivalry, uh, it's been a fairly close ball game for the last several years. Uh, you know, our, our group of seniors that are here now, we do have a, quite a large group of them, uh, have won an awful lot of football games over the past three years. But, uh, you know, the one thing we haven't accomplished is beating either OU or Nebraska, now namely OU. It's still a matter of respect. Uh, I think it showed how people view us just by the loss. We, we dropped from, what, 7th to, to 17th, almost out of the top 20, just because we got upset. And, and I think that a lot of people will respect us more if we go out there and beat OU. We didn't beat Nebraska, and, and we didn't get the respect there, but we still have a chance to gain it against OU. And, and people can say, well, hey, they are a quality team. They've won you know, so many games in the last couple of years. Uh, they've been upset once. And basically, you know, we're a running team, so, you know, we're going to go out and try to run the ball and try to establish a running game. And I think to do that, you know, we have to have good protection for Ryan. And, and I think, you know, if we have good protection for Ryan, you know, it might open a couple of holes up for me. They're so physical up front, you just can't line up and try to hammer it at. I mean, by and large, we are a fairly good running football team. But, uh, you know, we are capable of throwing the football. Ronnie Williams uh, set a school record his first start against Nebraska on ESPN. Uh, but I, I don't think there's any secret about the fact that the you know, people who have moved the ball against OU, which is not very many, ha have done it basically throwing. You know, Miami exploited them somewhat throwing the football. Of course, I get a key to being able to throw it against them is you've got to be able to protect. When they can just back their ears and, and, and rush the passer there again with their team speed and quickness, they're about as good as anybody. And, and uh, again, you've got to try to keep them off balance, got to try to do the unexpected. So the scene is set. You can hear the crowd behind us. Oklahoma against Oklahoma State. We'll be back at halftime with a look back on this CFA season. Now let's go to football. All right, George, and the field conditions are miserable. It is very cold here. Make no mistake about that. They'll be talking about this for a long while. Talking about the Oklahoma defense, what about the Oklahoma State defense? Two All-Americans on the Cowboys defensive squad. They do. They have Leslie O'Neill and Mark Moore. These two gentlemen here are All-Americans, legitimate All-Americans. Pat Jones feels, Jim, that the Oklahoma State team can't stay with Oklahoma defensively. The big problem, as we all know, is can they move the ball offensively? I think this defense is strong enough to stay with them. I said as we came on the air, Jamel Holloway is a modern-day college football success story. A freshman won one in the press box and the press book. And yet here's their leading rusher, and he's their catalyst for all the games they've won. I think the amazing part about Holloway is the fact that he wasn't really on any depth chart or anything when, when, when they lost their quarterback. And then here this young man comes in, and he's leading this team in rushing. Look at this, 684 yards, 423 passing, 11 touchdowns. If that isn't pulling your team up, I don't know what is. Looking around again, we said it's supposed to be a sellout crowd here. It is a sellout crowd. How many show up? I don't know. But the teams have shown up, and we got a great game coming up. Oklahoma and Oklahoma State when they come back to Stillwater. Just keep it around you. Keep it around you. I'm all right. Yeah. 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 Raising rain and snow, you can see that. Temperature 27 degrees, expected to drop dramatically. In the next several hours, the wind, they say, is eight miles per hour, and it certainly feels like it's more than that. But the fellows down on the field are the ones that are going to take the licks and give them, and they're here to play a game. Oklahoma, that's Pat Jones, head coach of Oklahoma State. The room is swirling around. He is the next head coach at Pittsburgh. Nothing to be decided, although Jones will talk to the pit officials once this game is over. Barry Switzer, one of the most successful coaches in the country, with that winning percentage of about 83%. And he's still got SMU next week. And then the Orange Bowl against Penn State, a team we saw last week here on ESPN. They will have to clear the way. Oklahoma State will before Joey O'Donnell can kick off. We had thunder, freezing rain, and snow before the game began. Back deep, Patrick Collins is number 33. And Derek Crudup is number 15. 
Jim, this is the problem. When I said about the kickers in a kicking game, their footing, they're clearing a spot away because remember now that foot has to be planted. If he slips and falls, the ball doesn't go anywhere. Amazing conditions. But the game will be played, and it does count. It is the Bedlam Series. Both teams going to a bowl where it'll be much warmer. Oklahoma State to the Gator, and as we said, Oklahoma to the R. And now, O'Donnell to kick off. It is a very short kick taken by the up man there, Patrick Collins, and Collins slips and falls down, and that's going to be the problem all night long. How to get going, let alone make a cut. Now, remember, Collins was coming straight up field. He wasn't making a cut. Jamel Holloway, number four, will be your quarterback. Anthony Stafford, 25. Lydell Carr, 45. Patrick Collins, 33. Your backfield, Derek Shepard, number three. A wide receiver, Keith Jackson. What a game he had last week against Nebraska, number 88. Pope and Marks. Protect that. Polk and Phillips, your tackles, Hudson and Ferrer, the guards, and Simpson at center. Straight ahead, that is Lydell Carr, and no place to go. Down at the bottom is John Washington. The nose tackle, number 80. Warren Thompson, 91. Leonard Jackson, 84. Washington, 80 in the middle. Leslie O'Neill, the All-American, 99. Harry Roberts, number six. The front five for Oklahoma State. Ricky Adams, 54. James Ham, 40, the linebackers. Davies Williams, five. Melvin Gilliam, two, the cornerbacks. Mike Hudson, 10. And the hard-hitting All-American, Mark Moore, 44, the safeties. Second down and 10. Freezing rain is pelting down at the moment. Holloway still with the football and down. Well, he does not go down. Now he goes down at the 25-yard line. You see Harry Roberts getting up over there. And Mark Moore was also over there. As Jamel Holloway comes back on third down. And look at it come down. Travel warnings up across the state of Oklahoma. The Sooners are going to attempt to drive back to Norman a couple of hours from here once this game is over. That may be as rough as the game. And what you're looking at is the surface, and that's just a sheet of ice. And that's why the, the cuts are going to have to be precise. You have to just slow down and, and turn slow. That's going to give the defense an advantage. Third down and four. And down goes Patrick Collins. Hit as he was by Leslie O'Neill and Mike cuts in the safety. And Oklahoma will have to kick the ball away as Oklahoma State shows its defensive muscle. Jim, the safeties are not even worried about pass in this situation. And you're going to see Mike Cutson come stepping up inside. There he is. He's the man that makes the big hit. Leslie and O'Neill was downfield. He didn't get a really get a shot at him. And then Ham also came in. All right. It is Mike Winchester to do the punting. And Bobby Riley normally is deep, but he is muscle spasms. We'll have to check when he can to see what the number is down there and who it is. It is Riley back there. And the ball hits and will go just inside the 40-yard line. Outstanding field position now for Oklahoma State. Let's see if they can do anything with this icy turf. We've gone through two minutes and nine seconds of play, and there's no score. Oklahoma State and Oklahoma. The CFA on ESPN is being brought to you by the U.S. Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. By BMW, the ultimate driving machine to arrange a thorough test drive. Simply phone your nearest BMW dealer. And by Casio, maker of the shock-resistant, water-resistant G-Shock. It's a tough watch to beat. Ball at the 39-yard line. Ronnie Williams will bring out... His team, Thurman Thomas, 34, Will Timmons, 31. The running backs, Bobby Riley, number one, Terry Wheaton, 22. The split backs, I wonder how many times they'll throw the end tonight. J.R. Dillard, 87, the tight end. Jackson and Blair, the tackles, Burton Leachin, the guards, and Tucker at center. And Williams is going to throw on first down. First pass of the game, going for Bobby Riley and overthrows everybody by five to seven yards. It is second down and ten. Going against the number one defense in the league, Ronnie Williams. And not only in the league, in the country. That's pretty impressive stuff. There has been 15 interceptions. No back has gone 100 yards against Oklahoma this year. They're second in the NCAA against rushing. First in total defense. Incredible. And in the 
education. Oklahoma State coming out throwing right off the bat. <laughs> Now for the first time at his sermon, Thomas carrying the ball. Thomas nailed as he gets across the 50-yard line, and that should be enough for the first down. Herman Thomas says, if I get 100 yards tonight, we could win this ball game. Jim, the great blocking up front with Tucker, Meacham, and Burton, the guards, the two guards in the center. Just take a look at this hole. It is wide open. They're just blowing people right off the line of scrimmage. Blair, number 72, gets a decent block downfield, and Dermot Thomas picks up a first down. Matt Jones, 10 and 2 in his first year, could go 9 and 2 if they upset Oklahoma tonight. Oklahoma favored by more than two touchdowns to win this ball game. Roddy Wooden showing the willingness to pass again. Gets the ball out of here, and the ball is knocked away from Weaver on a fine play by David Vickers. Defensively, and it's number one in the nation. Daryl Reed, 40. Jeff Tupper, 78. Tony Casillas in the middle, 92. Steve Bryan, 86. Kevin Murphy, 39. Brian Bosworthy, 44. And Dante Jones is starting a weak side linebacker, 50. Derek White, 14. Derek Crudup, 15. Sonny Brown, 8. And David Vickers, because there's a back problem for Rayburn, number 10 is started. And here comes Thurman Thomas again. Thomas breaking a couple of tackles. Vickers finally knocks him down at the 45-yard line. It'll be third down and about seven to go. Jim, it's going to be a footing problem all night long, and it's not going to and it's not going to get any better because the temperature continues to drop. Number 44, the 34 is Thurman Thomas running with the ball. Uh, just take a look when he goes back to the outside. Bosworth, they're slipping all over the field, but Vickers comes up and makes a play, makes a stop on the play. Third down and six from the 45-yard line of Oklahoma. And here's Williams back again. Williams throws over the middle of Bobby Riley, can't get to it. Almost intercepted there by Sonny Brown, the only veteran starter in that defensive backfield at the beginning of the year. Jim, they had Will Timmons, number 31, the fullback, went out into the flat across the field, and not one soul went with him. He was livid. Sonny Brown is the man awaiting the first punt of the night for Rich Thompson of Oklahoma State. trouble holding the ball and then shoots it toward Sonny Brown and Sonny Brown apparently told forget that as it sails over his head it'll come out to the 20 yard line 11 26 to go first quarter no score in terrible weather a week ago Iowa State upset Oklahoma State that's why the Cowboys are four and two had that not happened that it was not expected this would have been a battle possibly for the Orange Bowl but it's Oklahoma with the ball now going to the Orange Bowl. Jamel Holloway, and nobody picks him up. And finally, he's ridden out of bounds across the way by Denise Williams, the cornerback on that side, number five. But that's a pickup of about eight yards out across the 25 to the 28-yard line. Jim, the, the bone is effective, but as long as the quarterback, now watch, the tackles take the fullback up in the front. But what happens now when Holloway goes down the side, what happens, people are starting to take the back and not worry. Roberts went after the back, and you're not worried about Holloway. He is your leading rusher. You must get him first. Second down and a couple. Holloway hands off, and not much there for Patrick Collins. Down at the bottom, you can see Jim Krebs, who did not play in this game last year. He was hurt. And I think Mark Moore is also getting up there, the free safety. Jim, the reason I say that you want to force Holloway to pitch, you've got driving rain, freezing rain, the conditions are terrible, the, hand, the, the pitches in the back are going to be a little sloppy, the ball is getting wet. You want him to pitch the ball because that gives you a chance, or that makes them, puts them in a situation where they can make an error. No score, almost four minutes have gone by, and this is the first quarter at Stillwater, Oklahoma. First down at the 30-yard line. And now a pass coming up for Holloway. And I think he's changed his mind. And gets 67 yards out to the 37-yard line. Changed his mind again. Denise Williams came over to help out on the tackle. Holloway set up as if to throw and then saw nobody open and a lot of room to run. Well, one thing, the reason that they can throw if they want to is the fact that Oklahoma State, they're going to sit in there and man-to-man -the -man on the corners. 
play Gilliam and Williams straight up with the wide receivers and leave the safeties in there to worry about the run. That's very swift out of those hats and coats there. Second down and short about three for Oklahoma. And Lydell Carr is the first man through and everybody's got him standing him straight up. Leslie O'Neill, John Washington, Warren Thompson, and we've got a Oklahoma man hurt and down on the field and holding onto his leg. I don't know which one it is. We'll have to check and see. But he is in pain. Pretty straight ahead play, but we have a man who's hurt there. Jim, I can't get a number. I can't either. I'm looking, but he's hurting. It looks like it's like it may be Travis Simpson who is the center. And that would bring in Ewell. We'll come back. There's no score in Stillwater. Updating you on college football. Charlie Bauman getting ready to try a field goal attempt. Early going for West Virginia against Syracuse. Got it. And it's a 3-0 lead for West Virginia over the Orangemen in the Carrier Dome. Third and two. Rick Ewell's in at center. Travis Simpson, the center of Oakland. Looks like it's his left knee. But that's just an opinion from high up here. Third and short for Oklahoma. And right down, they've lost the football, and they didn't get the first down. Oklahoma hangs on to the football as Spencer Tillman jumps on it. John Washington made the hit. The ball was fumbled. Tillman recovered for Oklahoma. They got to kick it away. Yules is a new center. Washington, look at it. He gets past the center, gets down the line, and makes the tackle on uh, Perry, Jim, that was just a great play. Washington never got blocked at all. Went down, went down the line of scrimmage, caused the fumble. Mike Winchester comes in the punt. Bobby Riley is back. And I want to tell you, that wind is blowing from your left to right and blowing freezing rain. And that kick is kicked right into it. Riley says, I want a fair catch and has it at about the 27-yard line. That'll be first down for Oklahoma State in this scoreless game. A game that the weather is going to decide a lot. Notre Dame on a Jerry Faust final game, 58 to 7 Miami. Alabama over Auburn. That's an upset there. Alabama wins. Auburn is going on to the Cotton Bowl. Florida State going to the Gator Bowl. Thumped by Florida, 38 0. Tennessee makes it to the Sugar Bowl, beating Vanderbilt. Dickey threw three touchdown passes. Kerwin Bell threw three touchdown passes for Florida. First down, Oklahoma State. Has been one big run tonight for Oklahoma State. That was for Thurman Thomas. And now here's a short pass over to J.R. Dillard, the tight end. And Dillard picks up maybe four or five yards over the 30-yard line just barely. Let us call it second down and six. Tony Casillas, number 92, the All-American nose tackle. Just take a look. He's up against Tucker. They're double teaming on that side. Meacham, number 58, is in there trying to help. But watch, he just splits both people. He's in the face of Williams. Couldn't get there soon enough. 8.45 to go. First quarter, no score. Out of the second and sixth for State. There's Thurman Thomas. There's a big hole for him. And it closes up quickly, but I think Thomas has got the first down. And just over the 36-yard line, Tony Casillas again on the hit. Since Casillas has come back in the Kansas game, there's been no rushing touchdown against Oklahoma. Now, take a look at it. You see the footing there? Thurman Thomas didn't seem to have much of a problem. Casillas was knocked on the ground, got back up and threw his body in front of Thurman Thomas. That is a great play. You did hear what I said, Paul. Since he came back, he was hurt in the Texas game, came back in the Kansas game, and since then, nobody has rushed for a touchdown against Oklahoma. He is quite a presence, along with Brian Bosworth, another All-American, a sophomore linebacker. Now here's Casillas. This is what we're talking about. Now watch. The center's blocking him. He is on the ground. Two people. Watch what he does, Jim. That's an All-American tackle for you. Ball in this weather, they've got three wide receivers out, as though they're going to throw the ball. Two to the right, one to the left. It is a first down for Oklahoma State. And with him will throw, looking all the way. Now he turns back this way and finds it for Riley, who can't get it at the 42-yard line. He had his man beaten, and beaten badly. Jim, Darrell Reed is a linebacker, and, or a left end, which, which is actually a linebacker, and he was trying to stay with Riley, and because Williams had that much time moving around the pocket, Riley broke clear. If Williams had the ball to him, it would have been touchdown. Ronnie Williams has not been reluctant to throw. That's a game plan. He's one for five, and that was for four yards with J.R. Dillard as tight end. 
second down and ten. On the 36 yard line. No score in the first quarter. Here's Thurman Thomas looking for somewhere to go. No place to go. And you can see right in there, Armin Yazo, number 42, the weak side linebacker leading the way, a junior out of Kansas City. And out is third down and very long, about 13, as the ball is put down at the 33 yard line. Jim Eliazzo, what he does is you don't see him in the picture right there, but you'll watch him make the play. He just slides down the line, finds Thurman Thomas, and then it fills the gap in the hole along with Murphy. Third down. And let's call it 13 to go. Footing is a problem. Brakes will probably decide this game because no finesse out the window. Now there's a ball thrown and not caught by Kenneth Brown. Brown is a tight end backing up Dillon, but he's being used as a wide receiver along with Weimer and Riley in the same formation. And so now they'll have to kick it away again. And this is becoming a kicking game. You should love this former putter. I, well, I do. You just watch the kicker to Kenny Plant so he'll be able to plant his foot real well. The thing about, I'm really impressed about is the way Ronnie Williams is throwing the football. He's not having any problem at all. There is Derek Shepard. He is the deep man now. As Rich Thompson will kick the ball away. Pushes the ball straight. Shepard's there at the 26-yard line. Looking for some place to go and find some place to go and then takes quite a hit. And that hit is by number 84, Leonard Jackson, a defensive tackle downfield. Well, take a look at this one. Is yeah. something? Look, watch this shot by Leonard Jackson. When he breaks to the outside right here, here comes Jackson, full speed, wham, and can you believe they can hold on to the football? That's tough. <laughs> I'll start my lot again. Take a look at this weather. And now look where Paul and I are going to go if we ever get out of here for next weekend. Saturday night, 7 o'clock Eastern time, BYU on its winter bowl against Hawaii, live on ESPN. The weather, I can promise you, will be different. I'll I'll score this right one. here. Oh, this is a good game. But, Paul, I'm firmly convinced it's going to be breaks. Ball is handed off, and the fullback's got no place to go. Bondell Carr must have three carries now for about two yards. Second down and short, or long, I should say. 6.50 in this first quarter. Well, I'm surprised at the amount of people that did show up, Paul, because in the area, and I'm sure that those who didn't have probably lived perhaps in Norman <laughs> and didn't make the trip down here. There have been warnings all day long about this weather. It is no surprise. Ball into the car again. And again, another yard or two. Idel Carr, a sophomore, started as a freshman, Oklahoma out of Enid. Matter of fact, they have two seniors who start on the entire offensive squad of Oklahoma. But they also have two sophomores and two freshmen in the backfield. And on the whole team, offense and defense, four freshmen start and seven sophomores start. Young team, third down and a long five from the 44. Oklahoma. All the way, and he's not going to go anywhere. And it's fourth down. He just can't make those cuts. Ricky Adams, the linebacker, number 54, made the stop. Jim, what they're doing, first of all, they're stuffing the fullback. They take care of him first. The second man is Holloway. And watch what happens. Ricky Adams, number 54, down the line of scrimmage. Here he comes up right now, and he's the man that makes the play at the feet. Williams, number five, helps out. Ham, number 40, is also there. That's Mike Winchester to kick the ball away. Riley, the deep man again. He had back spasms in the Iowa State game. Had taken that. They didn't know whether or not he'd be able to play. This is a shorter kick. They better not handle this thing. If you're going to be in trouble with that, still the wisest course. This may be one of the big breaks of the game. Unless they can move it out, Oklahoma's going to get outstanding field position. And that is a slippery thing to handle as it goes down to the three-yard line. And that could be trouble. 5-12 to go. I said it was a wise thing to do, Paul. Disagree? I disagree. I disagree. I just do. Let's take a look at the, the average breakdown of the plays. And rushing the ball, Oklahoma, 86, 86%. We can understand that. I think that what's going to change Oklahoma State, I think they're going to throw the ball much more than 37% of the time tonight. But don't you believe on that punt return ball that they might have felt that they just couldn't handle it cleanly and that's why they ducked away rather than just thinking it would roll 
much shorter than what it did at the goal line. Well, Bobby Riley was there, but he was slipping, Jim, and turned the other way. He had to get away from it. All right, they give the ball to Thurman Thomas. That's one tackle and gets out across the five-yard line. Daryl Reed, number 40, is the man that pounced on him as he gets to about the seven-yard line. Second down and seven to go. There are some excellent linebackers in this game, and this man, Brian Bosworth, number 44, is one. Just take a look at that, Jim. He slides down the line, gets bumped by the guard, Burton, and then gets into the play. Second and seven, and Lynn Beck is split about 15 yards to the left as a wide receiver. Everybody else in tight. Timmons has not carried the ball, but does this time, and that gets him out across the 10-yard line to about the 12. It'll be third and short. Now keep in mind, Thurman Thomas has carried the ball before tonight 278 times. Timmons is starting fullback tonight 37 times. So it is a rarity that Timmons carries the ball. You see what happens on a play when Timmons does carry the ball. They're all keying on Thurman Thomas. And when that happens, they leave Timmons alone. Four minutes to go in the first quarter. There's no score. It is third down and a yard to go. Oklahoma State right now, Jim, with this weather as bad as it is, Oklahoma State 50% run, 50% pass. That's a tight end leading the way for Thomas, who's got the first down. Dillard led the way, came down the line, and helped with the blocking. And Thurman Thomas has the first down out across the 15-yard line. Thurman Thomas does it. Bosworth, number 44, the linebacker, is going to step up. Now take a look at Here goes Dillard down the line. He goes through the hole. He leads there. Bosworth gets hit by, I was going to say, hit Thurman Thomas, but he got hit by Thurman Thomas, and he picked up the first down. Thomas has carried the ball seven times for 32 yards, and Oklahoma State has dodged the bullet a little bit. They still have to move it further down. They started this drive at the three, remember? And here is Ronnie Williams, and nobody realizes he's got the ball, and he's got about six or seven yards on the bootleg. And Pat Jones is pulling out all the stops for this offense in this weather. You like that? I Except like it's it. a busted play. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why it's a busted play, because Thurman Thomas went the wrong way. Williams went to hand the ball, and he said, where are you going? You're going the wrong way. So he kept the ball. They may put that play in and use it the rest of the day. I, uh, they did. <laughs> <laughs> Three minutes and seven seconds to go. Still scoreless. But Oklahoma, with the number one defense in the nation, has allowed Oklahoma State to escape from window in the shadow of its own goal line. They're back on the three. Now they're out at the 23. And here's Thurman Thomas again. Not much there at all. And Tony Casillas rises up to make the hit. Casillas' number is 92. You will see a lot of that tonight, no matter the outcome of this game. And that freezing rain continues to pelt down. Looking beyond the stadium, cars ball seem to be moving all right at the moment. Well, it's mixed with snow. And a little ice, a little rain, a little bit of everything. Temperature dropping rapidly. It's supposed to be just a, a terrible day tomorrow here in Stillwater and in Oklahoma. Third down and very short, and they've taken time out with 2.19 to go. There's no score between Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Simpson, Paul McGuire in Stillwater, Oklahoma, where it is third down and a yard for State in the scoreless ball game. Oklahoma State has the ball on its own 25-yard line. Field white. And we'll get whiter. Long count by quarterback Roddy Williams, who drops the ball, and I don't think he got the first down. Roddy Williams dropped the ball. That will happen tonight also. Oklahoma itself fumbled, remember? Jim, it is getting worse and worse because that time Ronnie Williams, when he fumbled the ball, he picked it up. He was going to try to pick up the first down, and his feet wouldn't move. He lost ground on it. And so now here, the punting statistics will be a big part of this tonight. Here comes Rich Thompson back for his third punt of the night. And going back is Derek Shepard. He's got to make sure he just gets that left foot planted, and he's got to do it very easily. The battle of field position belongs to Oklahoma now, depending on what happens here. No rushes on. Derek Shepard watches it down high, and he's not going to fiddle around with it either, but this is not going to roll toward the goal line, but rather sideways, and so it's down by Oklahoma State at the 37-yard line. 
And Oklahoma's offense led by Jamel Holloway comes back again. If you just joined us, there is no score and there has been no threat except that of the weatherman. The biggest lopsided field position situation has been the punt that rolled dead at the three, but they're able to get it out. This is what the Oklahoma Sooners have done rushing the ball this year. Impressive. Number one. In the big eight. Right ahead, but off the ball, it's loose. But they may say that the ground caused a fumble, but the ball was loose down at the bottom. No, Jim, the ball was pulled out. The man was stopped. And when you're stopped, the play is over with. Notice, Paul, that they're going with the fullback. Lido Carr is carrying the ball more than anybody else, simply on straight-ahead plays. And they want to force him to carry the football because they don't want to start pitching it. They're going to lose it. Very hurtful for the Oklahoma offense. That Jones' group trying to pull the big upset. All right, here's Lido Carr going up into the middle. They're just firing into the hole. That, that... I think it's a fumble. There, the ball is on the ground, but see, the official said that he was already stopped. Okay, second down. Cars carried the ball six times for seven yards. Now Holloway back for a pass. Lips as he tries to set it. Right down the middle, and he's caught the ball. A good catch. That was Carlos. They have 21 out there. Carlos Scott, a freshman defensive back, according to what we've got. But no, is that, that's a 27, I think, Jim, and it's very difficult for us to see it. If it's 27, then it's still. Holloway slips. Let's see this number again. That is 27, I believe. Are you sure? Yeah, it looks so much. The 7 on the top doesn't go down like it's supposed to. In any event, it's first down, and they give the ball to Carr again, and that's his best rush of the night, getting inside the 25-yard line. Lydell Carr picked up as many yards on that play as he had in his previous six carries. Did you notice the difference in the play, Jim? That time, instead of running Lydell Carr straight up the middle, this is going to be into the quarter, they ran him off the tackle on an angle. Well, Oklahoma has its first drive of the night, the first drive of the night for anybody, but the first quarter ends scoreless in this snowstorm here in Stillwater, Oklahoma. In Stillwater, Jim Simpson, Paul McGuire, along with some rugged individuals who've chosen to play this game and watch this game under conditions that can only get worse and a forecast to get worse. You can see the freezing rain and snow freeze even more just as it hits. It's an ice pond out there. And close to the first down goes Spencer Tillman. Let's chill now to George Graham. Jim, no weather problem in the Carrier Dome, and West Virginia has tacked on another field goal from 27 yards out. They lead Syracuse. The Orange have been 6 to nothing early in the second quarter of football. Let's go back to Stillwater. Syracuse going to the Cherry Bowl. West Virginia not going anywhere. Both of these teams here going to bowl games as they measure for the first down after the run by Spencer Tillman, and they've got it. Now, here's the threat. No score, but first down Oklahoma at the Oklahoma State 18-yard line. And Janelle Holloway has not been the big running star tonight, but his pass to Damon Stell has set up this long drive. Okay, Spencer Tillman is in there. Lydell Carr is in there. And Collins. it looks like Patrick Collins is starting backfield again. First down. Holloway still with the ball, and they close on him and knock the ball loose and out of bounds, but he gets the ball where it goes out of bounds. Looked like Mark Moore came over the hard-hitting and the All-American free safety out of Nacogdoches, Texas. It's, it's hard to hold on to the ball, I understand that, but it's a lot harder when somebody nails you like Mark Moore does. Watch what number 44 does here to Holloway. He comes in, that's a hit. Huh. He just hammered him. Picked up some yardage on the play. The ball went forward about two and a half yards. Second down and four yards, and the ball is inside the 12. Most serious start of the night. Leon Perry has come in now, playing the right halfback spot. And they give it to Lydell Carr, and Carr, I think, got the first down. Very close to it, down at the seven-yard line. If so, first and goal to go Oklahoma. Spencer Tillman jumping up and down as though Carr got it. First down, Oklahoma. And now Patrick Collins comes back in. Way, 
First down, goal to go. Thank you, Jim and David. No score here, but Oklahoma in this driving snow and sleet storm has a first down at the seven-yard line. Spencer Tillman of Oklahoma carries it inside the five of Oklahoma State. It is second down and goal to go under miserable conditions. Carries down near the three-yard line. You're absolutely right. This weather is, and, and the wind shifts, and it comes into this booth. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like the Carrier Dome where they're watching the Syracuse-West Virginia game from. I can guarantee you that. But this is the first real threat of the game. Oklahoma's finally gotten its skating act together. On all, oh, lost the ball, and it may be State. Who gets it? They got oh, it back. Oklahoma gets it back. Tillman, I think, jumped right on it again. That's number 20 under there. Spencer Tillman jumped right back on the football. And so it is third down and goal to go, but now from the six. The ball just pops out of Holloway's hands. Look at it. He never gets possession. Then it's kicked back. And Spencer Tillman, that's just a great hustle on his part. He went after the football. Now, if they don't make it here, you might think of field goal and kicking a field goal in this kind of conditions. Hollowing out a little spot to walk up and punch that ball through. Pat Jones, head coach of Oklahoma State. His team on the defensive and the shattered own goal line for the first time. Third down and goal to go from the six. I don't fire. It's held on. The fake there. Holloway is for the left. Drops the ball, and they say it still belongs, but he was stopped. Still belongs to Oklahoma. Denise Williams, the cornerback, came up and got him, but it's fourth down, and now we're going to see Tom Tim Lasher come in and try a field goal. Jim, again, what they want this quarterback to do, as we talked about before, is pitch the ball. Lakari fakes the car. Now, down the line. Now, watch. They're going to take, take him on right there, Holloway, and all of a sudden, Williams comes up and slams him to the ground. The ball went out. But that's after he's on the ground. The ground cannot cause a fumble, even in a snowstorm. 27 yards, Paul, in a snowstorm by <laughs> Tim Lasher, who has hit nine field goals in a row. And this is asking a little much of him because he's making the run-up on this slick ice. The ball is up and make it 10 in a row and give the score to Oklahoma, 3 to nothing. Now, for those of you watching Syracuse and West Virginia, let us go back now to Jim Kelly. And for the rest of you staying with us in Oklahoma, we'll come back. The Sooners lead by three. By Budweiser, Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. And by GTE, we can do things with your business. And now to kick it off will be Tim Lasher. Looks like Mark Moore is one man deep. And I think Thurman Thomas is the other. Quite frankly, looking with you, I can't quite tell. Or is that Harry Roberts, number six there on the left? That's Harry Roberts. That's Harry Roberts on the left. Okay. Mark Moore on the right. And this is what they're looking up the field from behind the goal post there. So the man is going to kick off. Here it comes. And this is going to be what? Mark Moore, if he can hold on to the ball, somebody better get on it. Or they're in deep trouble. They're down at the 11-yard line, first and 10. Very nearly disaster there for Oklahoma State, trailing by three. Jim, not only do you have to catch the football, but you got to make sure your footing's there. Now watch Mark Moore. He doesn't really have the footing. He reaches for the ball, stumbles. Now everybody's fighting for the ball, and the ball's sliding around. It's still Mark Moore finally gets back on top of it. Like Harry Roberts got in there, too. Number six, the other return man. <laughs> the, ga the Gators with the, the oranges, yes. The Gators, that's the Gator Bowl that Oklahoma State is going to, and the Oranges that Oklahoma is going to, the Orange Bowl. Now Ronnie Williams will try to get something started. Last time he started from his own four, now he's starting from his ten. And here's Thurman Thomas, and Thurman Thomas bounces off a few people and gets six yards out to the 16-yard line before he is knocked out of bounds there. By number 14, Derek White, the cornerback on that side. You know... I know. You could do the scoring grab in a minute. Cause I, well, hate rushes one pass, 53-yard, 27-yard field goal. But, Jim, when that wind shifts and comes back in the booth this way, I lost. I, I couldn't talk. Let me tell you something. You cannot duck snow and sleep, so don't try. I'm not trying to duck it. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. 12.06 to go in the first half, and it's 3-0. The wind has shifted an awful lot. We have a penalty on the play, Jim, and I didn't even see the flag. 
Takes the ball back to the five yard line. I think it is going to be holding. Holding on the offense. It is still first down. That's what it is. It only ends up being a five yard penalty because they were at the 10 and they get half the distance. Roddy Williams, I don't know if they'll throw from here. He has before, but he is one for six for four yards. Hit that tight end, and the rest of the time, nothing. And now he gives it to Timmons, his up man, and Timmons gets a few yards, and that is all. Will Timmons the ball carrier? I want to tell you, Paul, it must be awful down there. I know they're in a game. Their concentration is as good as they can get it for this but they just can't get their footing they can't pat jones to win this ball game tonight he's going to put out all the stops he figures he has to to beat the number one defensive club but in this kind of weather how do you pull out all the stops yeah he had the thing about his game plan is he had reverses and and all kinds of different funny things that they were going to do and you can't do them you got to throw that all away and they worked on them all week long now you just got to go try to go straight ahead whoops and there goes Roddy williams well, i think that was in his playbook but not to fall. Now that was supposed to be a bootleg to that side. Johnson number 80 never took the fake anyway. He was there. There's Pat Jones and he's looking. He's wondering what, I, what we can do. Here it is. You can see, you can tell this is a fake all, all the way. And then Williams just hits the turf. All right, it is third down and long. But West Virginia is about to score again, surprisingly against Syracuse. Let's check in with Jim Kelly. Thank you, Jim Simpson, and we welcome those of you watching the bragging rights of Oklahoma. Hollafield and a dive around the left side. It was third and 13 for West Virginia. You see the swarming Orangeman defense right there, led by number 93, Ted Gregory, the sophomore. There is Don Nealon. It is decision-making time, but already with two field goals by Charlie Bauman of 29 and 27 yards, not much of a decision. They are right smack in the middle of the football field. Bauman, who came into the game 12 out of 16, has been perfect here tonight. A 30-yard field goal try. Snap, spot, kick is on its way, and it is no good. He missed it wide to the right. The score stands 6-0 in favor of West Virginia. Let's go back now to Oklahoma and Oklahoma State and Jim Simpson. Rich Thompson, the kick from his own end zone. Williams tried a punt on third down. And now Shepard is not even back there. He was up at the 30-yard line, and look at what has happened, because the wind was behind that. The line of scrimmage was the five-yard line, and they picked the ball down to the 36-yard line of Oklahoma, getting Oklahoma State out of trouble for the moment. And everybody's all around Rich Thompson. Rich Thompson, you know, when, when you, I can't believe what I saw. I guess they just told him, don't even think about fielding the ball. But Thompson, he got his legs up in the air, he got his whole body into the ball, just a great kick. First down, Oklahoma. On the 36-yard line, they lead by three. Hand off to the fullback, and down he goes in a big hurry. You can see Harry Roberts, the defensive end in there, but he's not the man that made the big hit of Lydell Carr. That was John Washington, who's playing a good game tonight. Jim, I'm, I'll say this. Washington, you watch him come down the line. Now, he's over the center. Yules is the center now. And he just gets off him and makes the play in the back. That's just actual play. Roberts was also there. The people that came to this, the people are here at this football game. Those good old boys are going to be sitting around in the morning. Greg and Kyle said, I went to that game, man. I tell you what, a lot of them are leaving the game. I hate to tell you. Stafford is coming now, but the, well, it's a fake. And Holloway slips and now goes ahead. And he does not get, well, he hasn't got a get. Almost the first down. It'll be third down and short. They had him at the 40. Gets all the way up to the 45 with Leonard Jackson holding on. Now, remember, Holloway weighs 175 pounds, and Jackson is 278 pounds. You're going to see Jackson, number 84, Leonard Jackson. Watch. He fights off the block, and he sees Holloway running. Now, he's going to get a piece of him right there, but watch the yardage. Holloway picks up. Wait a minute. I just lost my breath. Another seven yards. And I said Jackson weighed 278, 238. But still, that's something for Holloway to drag him. Third down, about a yard to go. Harry is in it. One half back is Spencer Tillman trying to get the first down. And I think he's got it. I'm not quite sure. At the 46 yard line. Check on the clock. Nine minutes, six seconds to go. First half. The 27 yard field goal by last year's the only score of the game. Mark Moore, they're all American from Oklahoma State. Defensive back. Watch it. He's going to slide over the play. He sees it coming. 
Look at this. He just, they're running almost heel and toe, Jim. Instead of where you would run up on your toes, you get your heels down and go flat-footed on his deal. First down for Oklahoma at their own 44-yard line. LSU in the first quarter, up 14-0 over Tulane. West Virginia, Syracuse. They're West Virginia surprising Syracuse. And you know the score right here, three to nothing on that field goal by Tim Lasher. First down, Oklahoma on their own 46-yard line. They have dominated since the first five or six minutes of play. They've had the ball most of the time. And Lydell Carr get ready for run. <laughs> oh, excuse me, but that wind and snow actually just blew right into my mouth, and I just could not say a word. You see Rick Yules getting up there. Remember, Travis Simpson went out what looked like an injury to his left knee. We don't know the extent of the damage, if there is any. Cars carry the ball 10 times now for 19 yards. Lee Morris, number 84, a split end checks in for Oklahoma on second down nine. And there again is the fullback, and that is Carr gets into Oklahoma State territory. Now it's going to be third down and a long five to go as he gets to the 49-yard line of Oklahoma State. We talk about how bad the footing is. The All-American Leslie O'Neill, watch this. He try, he slips right there. Pope is the man supposed to block him. He's in no sense of blocking. You can't get out. <laughs> His legs are flying out. It's funny up here. I know it isn't funny down there, fellas. That's You'll be it. in the halftime in about eight minutes. You're wrong there. It's not funny up here either. <laughs> wow, look at that. You think they care what's going on out uh, there? Then we get the feet warm. Third down, long five to go, remember. And now reverse. a reverse coming this way. And here's that man again. And that is Keith Jackson again. And he's got the first down. Not the 88 yards that he seemed to get every time. He went with that number 88 against Nebraska last week. Remember, three carries for 45 yards plus per carry. Well, he's got a big first down here. See this? And this is a safe reverse, Jim, because you're handing the ball from the quarterback to the tight end, coming around in close quarters. And Jackson picks up his feet, just trying to keep his footing. And then Jackson puts him down. First down, 34-yard line for the Sooners, leading by three. Oh. Run it back the other way. They got him on the right side. They didn't run it back the other way, but they give it a car instead, and cars inside the 30-yard line. Biggest thing here, I would imagine, Paul, aside from keeping your feet, is keeping hold of the football. The hands get cold, the ball gets wet and slippery, and, of course, it's difficult. It really is. It, it cars handling the ball most of the time between the tackles. Here's Leslie O'Neill coming down. Now that's on Pope. He throws him away, comes down the line of scrimmage, and makes the tackle on Carr. Second down and five. Well, Oklahoma State's defense thought it could stay with the Oklahoma offense tonight. But with a slipping and sliding, they haven't been able to do it. With a halfback at Spencer Tillman, it'll be third down and a few yards to go. Upended by Leonard Jackson. You can also see in on the play John Washington. Look at that, 114 yards to 46. And remember, Thurman Thomas said, if I get 100 tonight, we got a chance to win this. Well, most of those 46 yards are his, although Ronnie Williams on a busted play did pick up some yardage. And Oliver tried to do it. And Holloway does not do it. Well, now here comes decision time. It's going to be fourth down, I think, in half a foot, because they marked him over the 25 ball. And if he gets to the 24, he's got the first down. Jimmy, with their defense at Oklahoma, and I don't care what the condition are, especially here now, because Oklahoma State can't move the ball. Here comes Holloway. He just, it wasn't a busted, it was a busted play. He never got the handle of the ball. He was going to turn it around and hand it off. He did the smart thing, and he turned up field. But you go anyway. If this was a normal condition, the way, as good as this defense is of Oklahoma's, you just go ahead and run the football. I think they're going to measure, and Oklahoma State is saying, what? But Oklahoma figures it's already gotten the first down because Holloway was across the 25-yard line and was shoved back to about the 30 or 32. Don't you ever in your life, Jim Simpson, Tell me about Buffalo weather. <laughs> <laughs> Paul says that because he lives outside of Buffalo. Oh, boy. 
Well, it is third down and that long to go. Fourth down, big your pardon, that long to go, and they're going to go for it because it's not a move has been made to the sideline at all. Three to nothing, Oklahoma looking for first down inside the 25-yard line of Oklahoma State. You gotta think, barring a slip, they'll get it. You never know. Linebackers in the middle are coming. And Holloway takes it. And I think he got it. His initial surge would have gotten it. Jamel took it himself and bounces up as though he'd got it. Also wiping his hands off. And they're moving the sticks. First down, Oklahoma. He's got 26 yards. Look at that. He just tapped the center. Bulls, and they just took off right up the field. He almost lost the football, Jim. He sure did. And now we see Derek Shepard coming back in. Perry comes out. And it's first down at the 24-yard line. 5, 18, and counting. 11th play of the drive, Jim. There have been 10 runs. Derek Shepard very wide to the left. Holloway is the only one throwing effectively tonight. Ball goes straight ahead of Lydell Carr, his best run of the night, and he's close to a first down inside the 15-yard line. Dragged down by Demise Williams, number five, the cornerback on that side. <laughs> Keep running at him enough, you're going to break it. Here comes Carr. And again, Jim, this was off on an angle, not so much straight up uh, straight up the field, but off to the side. Williams comes in, gets a, gets a piece of him, puts him on the ground. Oklahoma State has not really threatened tonight. But Oklahoma has threatened to come away with a field goal and threatening again, second down and short, inside the 15-yard line. But again, Lydell Carr, Leslie O'Neill stood him up right at the 15-yard line, and he is shy. It'll be third down in about a yard, but as Barry Switch has already shown us, Paul, this is four-down territory right here. He'll go for it if well, he needs to. Well, now, they, they have, now they're back in field goal range again. At least I think the last field goal was pretty good. Welcome to all of you watching the Syracuse West Virginia game. Jim Simpson, Paul McGuire. The ball is at the 15 yard line. Oklahoma leading 3 0, threatening again. Third down and about a yard to go in this blinding, nearly blinding snowstorm. Oklahoma's dominated play is Holloway throwing the ball, and it is intercepted by Harry Roberts, the defensive end. They drove, never threw the ball until they got down here, and then put it up, and Harry Roberts grabbed it. Jim, I, I, all right, I know you've got a strong football team, but I don't understand that play. They were trying to throw the ball to Keith Jackson, number 88. And take a look at Holloway there. When he goes back to throw, he sets himself, and Roberts just steps right in front of Jackson, takes the ball away. He was covered from behind by Williams. Really no chance to get the ball in there. They were running so well. Why would you even think with a half a yard to go think about throwing the football? You still had two more down. Well, they did, and Oklahoma State's got it. And the big thing here is, of course, that Oklahoma has been able to stop Oklahoma State. They've not been able to move the ball, but now we see the one-back offense for Oklahoma State. Only one man is deep. And let's see what they do off of this. Oh, falling down. In the back, and that is Thurman Thomas. Just took a half a step. And now it is second down and plenty from about the two-yard line. He lost five yards on that play, taking this handoff and immediately falling down. That's the kind of thing that could determine this game. Thus far, Oklahoma, of course, has looked to be the stronger team. They move the ball better. They leave out the score through to nothing. Now they got Timmons in there as a fullback. They're going to get that ball out of the end zone. No slipping in the end zone, or it's a safety. Here's the up man Timmons, and Timmons is driven back by Dante Jones. And a little heat going on down there. And a right. flag goes up. All right, here's Holloway, Jim. We're looking at, the, at the, uh, the, the interception of Roberts. They're throwing the ball, marching all the way down the field, running the football. They've got third down and about a half a yard, and they went for the touchdown. The big play to Jackson, and Roberts intercepted it. All right, I'll give you a, uh, I'll give you a question, Paul McGuire. What happened on this play? You weren't watching the penalty. I was. Take a guess. I'll tell you, when they try to rip the ball out of... Oh, well, let me tell you. What happened? 
<laughs> personal foul, Oklahoma. Personal foul, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. State. Nothing happened. You sure? <laughs> Somebody down there got clocked, but at least the ball is not moved because of the penalty. Dead ball. Personal foul on both teams. Third down. Why call it? All right, here we go up into the middle. And that is Timmons. And they're going to take him back into the end zone. They're trying to make a wish with him. And he kicked at someone. But I don't think that's where the personal foul is. It's up It's up in here. They, they start throwing a little, little something up there. You're right. This is Thanksgiving weekend. <laughs> They're going to make a win <laughs> with Timmons. All right. It is third down and long. Third and about 12. Oklahoma 96 yards rushing. 38 for Oklahoma State. Remember now Oklahoma only gives up a little over 70. And now here comes Thomas. And he gets out near the original line of scrimmage. Past it. But it's going to be fourth down and about eight yards to go with two and a half minutes to go in the half. And now they're going to have to call on Rich Thompson again. Remember the kick, and remember the fact the last time, Derek Shepard did not try to field the punt at all. And Thompson was able to boot the ball all the way back to the 36. Time has been called. 2.29 left. Our score remains the same. Oklahoma leads by three. Remember, at halftime, George Grant will be around with all of the college football and other college sports today. Basketball going on, of course. And uh, a look back at college football 85 here on ESPN. And we've had some big games. Rich Thompson to kick the ball away. Derek Shepard standing out at the 43-yard line. The scores only 3-0. Oklahoma State hopes to get a good kick and hopes to be able to hold. And now he has kicked the ball away, and it is going to take... They can't even cover the ball. <laughs> that, that was something. Over there to get on it and could not do it was Watson. Back in a moment. They want to get this game over. They would not stop for us. And so Holloway completed the pass to Derek Shepard and then Carr carried the ball. And at a second down and about a yard to go inside the 15 of Oklahoma State. With a minute and a half left, and Oklahoma leading three to nothing. And now there is Carr getting down to about the ten-yard line, but that's enough for the first down. First and about goal to go, maybe a little bit more than ten yards, with 1:29 to go. Carr has been doing the yeoman work tonight. Sixteen times he has carried the ball. The Sooners have. Well, I want to show you something, Paul. There's no truth that Barry Switzer wrote this. Too <laughs> cold for me. Watch. I love Miami. <laughs> well, the Sooners not their next game because they got to go home to Norman to play SMU next Saturday afternoon. Oklahoma thwarted moments ago when Harry Roberts intercepted the pass, and now there's Holloway stumbling, coming down, and they let him go. Three men there ran through all three men and gets down inside the five yard line and stops the clock. Jim, I don't know whether it's footing or not, but I tell you, on that play there, again, I was telling you earlier, you got to tackle him and force him to throw the ball. As bad as the weather is, what? He goes right between people. No one even touched him. That was Roberts, number six, that let him go. He should have come in and made the play, but I, I think his man is still the halfback. Oklahoma leading by three, threatening to make it perhaps ten by halftime. Second down, Tillman, the football, and touchdown. First touchdown of the game. Spencer Tillman, a junior out of Tulsa, hamstring problems most of last year. Pat Jones looking on, disappointed. Jim, they just blow him right off the line of scrimmage right here. Tillman just goes inside. He's in behind Perry and also, also Carr. Look at this. That's a beautiful play. Offensive line blocks him out. Touchdown. Spencer Tillman. Now, Tim Lasher, the 70 conversions in a row, and his career makes it 71 in a row. And with 109 to go, Oklahoma 10, Oklahoma State nothing. And State will have a chance when we come back in this weather. 
Don Thompson will kick the ball off for Oklahoma. Mark Moore and Harry Roberts are the deep men. And I tell you what, Paul, we are losing fans by the bundles. Oklahoma up by 10. The weather getting worse. And people heading for the exit say enough is enough. You can see people moving around and you can see the empty seats. This, folks, is a sellout. But a lot of folks are listening to me talk instead of sitting here in the stands, and some of them are not doing either. They're leaving to go home. Here's Todd Thompson to kick off. Ball fell off the tee. This is one of those no-show deals. You gotta love it. You gotta love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> folks, I work with a madman. I'm sure. Here's Todd Thompson to kick off. That thing along the ground. That'll do it. Yep. Here comes Thompson. He kicks it up in the air. That is Moore, and he's going to bring it out. Waited a little while before bringing it out. Here he comes. Since he sees something, he gets out across the 20-yard line. About the 22-yard line. First down, Oklahoma State. I'm running out. 102 left in the half, down by 10. All right, here's the touchdown again, Jim, with Spencer Tillman. He just follows his blockers. He just blocked very well for him. The offensive line did a great job, and he's in touchdown. That gets you a little warmer. Oh, yeah. Not much. Oh, oh, where red his face is. That's right. That was white when he came out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. You're right, though. People will talk about this game for a long while. State wants to win it, make no mistake, as does Oklahoma. Here's Herman Thomas trying to get something going, and that's one of his better runs of the night, nearly a first down, but they're still about 69 yards away from score. He's running off to the right side where Meacham and Blair are on that side. Just a straight handoff. He's following his fullback, Timmons, up into the hole. And watch right there. He just breaks the tackle once he gets through the hole, breaks the tackle, and is on down the field. That was Williams, number 93. Look at these guys. Now, these guys are not wrapped tight at all. Well, but Thomas is averaging four yards a carry ball, 10 carries for 40 yards. He's had some good runs, and here he comes again. He's about their only hope as we're down to 20 seconds to go in the half. That's the first down. That will stop the clock while they move those chains. And they only have one time. Well, they have to still have two timeouts, but uh, see, they're going to get the ball back again in the second half. So make no mistake now. Thinking how Oklahoma could have been up, but for the interception by Harry Roberts after they moved the ball down, run, 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 run. Interception inside the 10-yard line. State couldn't do anything with it. Oklahoma came back. And there was the touchdown by Spencer Tillman to make it 10 to nothing. This half is over. A memorable half, Oklahoma State did not come close to picking up a score of any kind. Oklahoma came away with two out of a possible three at lead at halftime in the Bedlam series, 10 to nothing. Halftime coming up. Paul and I will be back for the second half and still with Oklahoma, but now let us check back with all of the news of football with George Graham. George Grand, welcome you back to College Football 85, the CFA on ESPN. We are at halftime with Oklahoma leading Oklahoma State by a score of 10 to nothing. The CFA on ESPN is being brought to you by the Sperry Corporation, a world leader in computer-based technology for business, industry, and for government. Coming up, we'll take a look back on the CFA season and also check out all the football from today when we return on College Football 85. We begin the second half, Oklahoma 10, Oklahoma State nothing. And remember, the Cowboys will get the football back. The Cowboys are on the field, and Oklahoma is just now beginning to make its appearance on the field. They're just starting out the runway. And while they come out, here are the halftime statistics. That's well, you, Paul. Well, it, I know. It's, <laughs> it's surprising. Only one turnover, and that was the interception. Oklahoma. But just take a look at the rushing yards of Oklahoma State. Now that's 60 yards in the first half. Oklahoma's only giving up a little better than 71 on an average per game. So at the end of the at the end of the first half, Thurman Thomas was seemed to be running well. And Jim, 
what's happening with these teams is they're, they seem to be running off tackle a lot better than they are going up the middle. They're jamming up pretty good and they're trying to get on a kind of slant plays off tackle. And that's where Thurman Thomas is picking up most of his yardage. Well, of the 60 yards that Oklahoma State has, 50 of those are by Thurman Thomas, who said before the game, or at least his teammates did, if he gets 100 yards, they feel it'll be in the ball game. But you could also see by the stats as Paul was talking that Oklahoma held the football nearly nine minutes more than Oklahoma State. Oklahoma scored twice on the 27-yard field goal, and then, of course, on the uh, short touchdown plunge by Spencer Tillman. But Oklahoma State did not come close at all. Here are the Oklahoma State possessions as they started. As a matter of fact, they started out rather well in that they had five plays before they had to punt the ball away. Five more plays, another punt. They did a lot of punting tonight. Six plays in the punt. Three plays only and lost yardage and had to punt the ball away. And so they had the ball five times and punted five times before they got it back at halftime and ran things out. And as you can see, as close as they got was the 45-yard line of Oklahoma. Now there goes back Harry Roberts who is number six and along with him back there is Mitch Nash the backup and now we see Moore is also back there they'll put Moore and Roberts deep as Todd Thompson will kick it off and Mitch Nash is one of the up men for a sellout crowd never the people that had the tickets did not all come but I would wager that 50 to 70 percent of those who did come have since left. Although, Paul, the wind is up, but it looks as though the precipitation has slacked off. Or is that my imagination or am I just hoping? No, it has. It really has. It's I, think it, I think it stopped. The sun's going to come out in about a half hour. Yes, sir. Somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and now this is Moore watching the ball, and he this time he will not bring it out. Come out to the 20-yard line, first and 10 for Bad Oklahoma down. State. And that means that Ronnie Williams will bring out Thurman Thomas and Will Timmons, his wide receivers Terry Weimer and Bobby Riley, J.R. Dillard as a tight end, Shanklin and Blair the tackles, Burton and Meacham the guards, and Tucker at center. And remember, as we told you, Pat Jones had worked all week long to use a lot of razzle-dazzle and keep the ball in the air to try to upset this great Oklahoma team only to have the weather just shut down. That kind of offense. He has thrown the ball a few times, only once successfully. First down from the 20. And here's Thurman Thomas. He does go straight ahead and to no avail at all. 92 is Tony Casillas, and he was right there to greet him. Reed, Tepper, Casillas, Ryan, and Murphy, Bosworth, and Mediazzo are your down linemen and linebackers. White and Crudup are your corners, and Vickers and Brown are your safeties. And to nothing, Oklahoma State has got to get something going, but there's a bag blowing across the field. I don't know if they're going to blow right up the line of scrimmage here in a minute. Here it comes. They'll have to get it out of there. Every single play, the defense, they come up to the line of scrimmage and they have to dig a little hole so they can get footing in the offensive line. They come up, they have, we can see them like a bunch of chickens in the yard, <laughs> <laughs> scratching around. Well, uh, tomorrow's December the 1st, and you would know it by being here. It is cold. Long count by Ronnie Williams, and on a slant and pass for Weaver, it is no good, but a, I think he took too long a count, although there's still time on the play clock, but the whistle blew before the play got started. Casillas is over the center now. Just take a look at Casillas. That's Tucker blocking him, but he's also getting help. You see, it's, he didn't really realize it's cold. Tucker puts him on the ground, but a lot of that is just slipping. Dead ball foul, a legal motion or procedure by Oklahoma State. Ronnie Williams has only completed that one four-yard pass. They'll move the ball back now to nearly the 15-yard line. There's a flag blowing, and at the moment, it is blowing right at us. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I was going to say up or down the field, but no, <laughs> right at us. The only thing you can do is laugh a little bit in this oh, situation, yeah. Jim. Tell you, it's not fun for those fellows to go down there and play this game. I guarantee you that. It's tough down there. Glenn Beck goes up. There's Williams back on second and long, handing the ball off to Thurman Thomas. That's supposed to be a halfback around there, but he's not going to make it because Steve Bryan, whose brother Rick was an All-American here a couple of years ago, made the stop. Steve's number is 86. 
And so now it is third down and about 17 yards to go from the 13 yard line. Jim, you know the players, and I've played in weather like this, the players, they don't mind the cold. I mean, you don't like it, but they don't mind the cold that much. The problem with them is their footing. They're just not sure of where they're going to go and how they're going to get there. And that's that's what upsets them more than anything else. Curtis Looper is in and is wide to the right as a wide receiver. He is a running back. And on third and 17, Ronnie Williams puts it out here to Thurman Thomas, who can't hold on to the football. At the 18-yard line, slightly thrown behind him, but Thurman Thomas, who dropped the screen pass last week against Iowa State, had lost two fumbles. And goes off the field. It is fourth down. And by the way, when your screen goes black, as they say, nothing wrong with your set. We are losing some cameras to the cold weather, and that is what is going on. Here's Rich Thompson to kick the ball away. Derek Shepard, the deep man, standing back at midfield. Thompson line drives this. And Shepard's going to let it go, and it's going to get a little roll and go into Oklahoma territory to about the 47-yard line. 13 minutes to go. Third quarter, no score in this half, but it's 10-0 Oklahoma. Pro computers. And by the financial professionals at Payne Weber Incorporated. Amy Holloway out there with his backs. Oklahoma's looked good tonight. Yeah, Spencer Tillman at left half, he scored the game's only touchdown. Collins at right and Lydell Carr carrying the football. Again, he's been the workhorse of the night. And James Ham, number 40, the linebacker, is the man on top of him after a gain of about three yards. All right, we have Oklahoma possessions now. Let's just see what they did. They have 10 points, remember. First time, they only three plays, and they punted. Then five plays, they had the punt. Oklahoma State playing well on defense. That's just all through the first quarter. But then all of a sudden, they got nine-play drive and picked up a field goal. Then that long 13-play drive, and they threw it on third and short. And then they ended up with a touchdown on a five-play drive. There's Spencer Tillman. And you can see Anthony Stafford is back in that left halfback. But that is Carr, and Carr is wrestled down again. This time, Leonard Jackson and Warren Thompson. Well, Paul, let me ask you a question. Away from the weather, away from the importance of this game as we see Pat Jones on the far side. Rumors are that he may go to Pittsburgh. A lot of recruits are here this weekend. The seniors are playing their last game. They're playing Oklahoma, their cross-state rival. An effect that words about Pat Jones maybe going to Pitt. How does that affect the team? All right, we'll talk about it right as soon as this plays. Right. It is third and long, third and about seven from midfield for Oklahoma. Holloway, and they're not going to go anywhere this way. Hands the ball off, and it's nothing. They fumbled the ball, but their whistle had blown. John Washington simply stood up. Lydell Carr. John Washington's playing a super game. And he comes right down the line of scrimmage. Look, he almost grabbed the quarterback, too, but that's that's number 80. That's Washington making the play, and the, and the play is stopped, and he just pulled the ball out. We're going to talk about what's going to happen with Oklahoma, with, with the recruits, with Pat Jones, maybe going to Pittsburgh. As soon as we get this punt off, and we come back when Oklahoma State has the ball. Mike Winchester kicked the ball away. Nobody at all is deep for Oklahoma State. They're just going to let him kick it. They're going to handle the ball at all. Rush it on. They're just going to let the ball go back and bounce. Now, last time they did this, it went inside the five, and this time it's going inside the five again and goes down to the one. So Oklahoma State trailing by 10, first and 10 at their own one. First down from the one yard line, trailing by 10. The snow and sleet has stopped. Thurman Thomas is trying to get something going and gets a yard or two, and that is all. Second down and about eight. Dangerous play run across the end zone like that. Are you asking me about Pat Jones? What, it hap what happens with recruiting? Jim, it all depends on who they get here. I mean, the, these kids have. The ones that are here are the ones that really want to go to Oklahoma State. And again, they, they do want to play for Pat Jones. But I think the school feels that Pat Jones, whatever is good for him, and, and, and that's fine with them. They would not like to lose him. I understand that. But the, the players here, it depends on what the next coach is or who the next coach is. It may be one from this staff here that these players like. Second down and nine. I was just wondering about in preparation for tonight's game. Here's Thurman Thomas, and he's got a quick start, and he bursts out there. And look out, it's a foot race now. 
They'll have to catch him. Oklahoma's fast and does catch him, but that's the best offensive play of the night for Oklahoma State. Ball started on the one. They got it out to the two, and then Thurman Thomas ran it out to about the 40-yard line. The market is a 39. He's on his way to his 100 yards. Thurman Thomas just breaks his, and that's a little slant off tackle again. He's behind Tim as a fullback, and once he breaks through, they really don't have a shot at him. Brown misses him. No chance for him. Bosworth is chasing him down the sidelines, and he's the man that gets at his legs. But Vickers, number 10, finally catches him, and they've got the ball. For the 35. Well, there is Thurman. He's got 89 yards now, and that's more than what a team usually gets against Oklahoma. They've been averaging against that Oklahoma rushing defense only 75.9 yards per game. And Pat Jones was saying something on the far sideline because apparently an Oklahoma man committed a personal foul. And Oklahoma naturally is not happy about it, but Jones raced on the field. A dead ball. Personal foul. It'll be first down. All right, it's 10 to nothing, but 10 minutes, 9 seconds to go, third quarter. And this is some of the best field position the Cowboys of Oklahoma State have had all night long. First down, they're inside Oklahoma territory at the 49. Jim, elements or not, but isn't it, it seems strange, a lot of games that you see where a team, I think we saw it today with Alabama, where they're, they're put way back in their own territory. They were at their four-yard line and went the length of the field. Here we are now, Oklahoma State, at their one-foot line, and they're back out over the 50. Then Beck is wide to the left. They give the ball to the up man Timmons who drops it. Question is, who's got it? I love it. White number yeah, 14 in there. Racing in from clear across the field saying, <laughs> we got it. He doesn't even know. Can't even see. Yeah, we're still, well, I'll watch while you watch this. All right, Timmons never really gets the ball right there. And there he goes after the football. And that ball's still up in the air. Oh, out of the state ball, Paul. Thurman Thomas could have been the guy that, that got back on the ball. They're looking for planes to come in. <laughs> Both of these teams headed for a bowl. As we've told you, Oklahoma State to the Gator Bowl against Florida State and Oklahoma to Miami and the Orange Bowl and Penn State in a great matchup. Always a great bowl in the audience. There's Ronnie Williams. Second down now and about 12 to go. Kenneth Brown in motion. Williams back to throw and dumps it low. J.R. Dillard was the intended receiver. Number 87 coming back into your picture. Now it's third and long. Jim Williams really, he was going to, it's a play action pass and he's, he's looking downfield for a little turn in. And all of a sudden, he sees the pressure on the outside. That's Brian coming at him, 86. And when he went to throw, the ball slipped out of his hands. and never got it to Dillard. Hands are cold, and the ball is wet and slippery. Third down and long. How's that? That's something. 18 quarters. That's four and a half ball games. They've not given up a touchdown. And they've only given up a couple of offensive touchdowns all year long. Now, here is the fake. Williams comes out, has his man, and there's the catch. And that's the first down. That's Kenneth Brown who makes the catch at the 37-yard line. Put down there by Liddell Glenn, but too late. Move the sticks. He had a fake to Thurman Thomas, and it just took everybody. They went after Thurman Thomas like on a sweep. And then Williams came back to the outside. And unless you've ever played on a field like this, the wind is as bad as it is, you can't imagine how great a catch this is by Kenneth Brown because that ball hits him on the fingertips and Williams just drilled it in. Nine minutes, 10 seconds to go. 10 to nothing, Oklahoma, the best drive of the night thus far for Oklahoma State. In motion is Looper. Herman Thomas had hit right at the line of scrimmage. Good play there. You can see by number 42, and that's your linebacker on the weak side, Paul Miniazzo out of Kansas City, Missouri. Number 42. Second down to nine to go. Thank you, folks. We got another game next week, too, seven o'clock. That'll be a culture shock for those who tune out tonight and tune back in next Saturday night when we're in Hawaii doing BYU at Hawaii. Culture shock for the fans or us. I don't know which. They better have Both. good weather over there, I'll tell you that. <laughs> it is second down with about 10 to go. 
Bay running its best drive, remember. There's a quick throw out there, and it is caught out there, and that is Beck out there, and he's got a first down, I believe. Lynn Beck, the senior out of Blanchard, that's his 16th catch. And let's see where they mark it. Shy of the first down. Looks like it is. Jim, I'm going to tell you something. As far as Oklahoma State is concerned, the elements are not here anymore. They're just throwing the ball now. Wiz gets it. And Beck made sure he caught the ball. He's got those gloves on. He's got the ball in the right hand. He's back out to the outside. Glenn is the man that knocks him out of bounds. They've got about a half a yard. And I can promise you that this is two down territory. Four, four down territory. Third pass completed. Last two of the three on this drive. Third and short. You'd look for Thomas on a slant. There's Thomas. He's got the first down. He's got the first down. And nothing, remember, Oklahoma. The drive for Oklahoma State started back on their own one. The good news is that the freezing rain and snow has stopped. The bad news is it's getting colder and the wind is blowing. All right, Meacham and Blair on the top side, the offensive guard and tackle. Tim has ran in there. He got stood up, but... Thurman Thomas just put his head down, went right through his own fullback, and picked up the first down. First down, put the ball at the 26-yard line of Oklahoma. Weimer goes wide to the right. Beck comes to the left as Pat Jones, the coach, looks on. And there's Thurman Thomas, and he gets a few yards. Broke one tackle. The tackle of Tony Casillas, who still has him about the ankle, but he got past Tony. Casillas held on, and it's a gain of about three. Second down and seven. Seven yards away. And, and this man said if he gets 100 yards in this ballgame, they will be in the ballgame. And, you know, with only a 10-point lead for Oklahoma, but there's just so many variables that can happen with the weather. Slippery football, the cold hands. There's Williams, still has the ball. There's nobody open. Now he finds a man and overthrows him over on the sideline, Kenneth Brown. Both of these teams, obviously, not because of the discomfort, but because of what they would like to do, would rather play this on a dry field and rather more moderate temperatures so they could both do their own thing. Oklahoma with its outstanding rushing attack and great defense, and Oklahoma State, which boasts two All-Americans on defense themselves, and they had all kinds of things planned for Oklahoma, but they just can't pull them off on this kind of field. No chance. They really did. They had, we said this in the first half, some reverses, a lot of gadget plays, a lot of different things that they were going to really try to do. It would have been a fun game, to, you know, fun watching the guys offensively. They figured they needed in order to beat Oklahoma. They respect the Sooners. They know they got a great ball club. Oklahoma wants that national championship. He's a swing out there to Thomas. Bang, he gets hit. And he grabs down to the 20-yard line. And it'll be fourth down and about four to go. Derek White came up and hit him. And then he got a little help over there also from Kevin Murphy and Brian Bosworth. White's going to come up and really stick Thurman Thomas, but watch the leg drive. His legs never stop. Here comes White. Look at Thurman Thomas. Keeps those legs driving, and he picks up three or four more yards. Boswell's in there with him. Murphy's there with him. All right, it's fourth down and five to go, and they're going to try for the field goal. Now, Joey O'Donnell, his longest has been 38 yards, and this will be 37 yards. Oh. And no chance at all. Oklahoma holds and will take over with 6.06 to go. But that's as close as Oklahoma State has gotten all night long. The Sooners continue to lead 10 to nothing. And we're in the third quarter. We'll come back to Lewis Field in a moment. Oh, let me correct one thing. That was not Joey O'Donnell starting or trying this kick. It was Brad Dennis who tried the field goal, and it did not work. All right, here we go. Just watch his left foot. When he steps up right there, it just slides. Jimmy had no chance. Left foot just slid right out from under him. Now Oklahoma with the ball starting from their own 20-yard line. O'Neill makes the stop. Uh, the man who has scored the only touchdown tonight, Spencer Tillman, on a short plunge in the second quarter. And to nothing. Anthony Stafford and Spencer are 
Going back and forth the left half. Collins is in at the right half and Carr who's played the whole game at fullback and has done yeoman work at fullback. He's taken some hits and had some good runs. There's Holloman. Holloway and Holloway's going nowhere because Leslie O'Neill got it. No, now here's something that's not in their offense tonight, Paul, and that is Jamel Holloway, who is a leading rusher. He had a couple of runs earlier on, but has been throwing the ball and handing it off. Right. Well, here he comes down the line, and watch Leslie O'Neill. He's a defensive end sit tackle sitting out there. He's going to get help from Jackson, but O'Neill stopped the play, and they're going right back there. Let's stop the quarterback first. Let's make him toss the ball. Then we'll make them make a mistake. 4.51 to go, third quarter. Now they split their backs out wide. And here's Holloway back to throw, and he's got time. Does he have a man? Yes, he's got a man. That's Pete Jackson. Jackson bumps one man off, and then Denise Wooden puts him down. That's a first down for Oklahoma. Our score is 10 to nothing. Let's check in at Syracuse and find out what's going on, George Graham. Jim, it's a little easier to kick a field goal with weather like this inside the Carrier Dome. Don McCauley, 41 yards out, and Syracuse is within three. West Virginia, six. Syracuse, three, third quarter. Back to you, Jim. Jamel Holloway is now three for four. The other was an interception. So when he has teed it up and thrown it, the young freshman out of Carson, California, has done very well. First down across the 30 to the 33. The Lydell Carr... Fumbled. The ball is fumbled out of bounds over there, and that's about the third or fourth time tonight, Paul, that the ball has been fumbled out of bounds. Lydell Carr got the fake, Stafford got the ball, and then lost the ball out of bounds. And the man that hit him again to cause another fumble, Mark Moore, they're all American. Move the ball out to the 40-yard line. And it is second down and three. Got the officials taking hold now just to set the ball down. Mm. <laughs> the, the drums are frozen. You can see the ice on the drums. Well, it stopped raining and everything else, Jim. It's too cold for that. Derek Shepard wide to the right. And Holloway turning back to say something to his backs. Stafford's got the ball now, and OSU's got him. And it's third down and a couple of yards to go. Anthony Stafford just did get to the line of scrimmage, and a lot of folks got to him. John Washington led the way. And you're right, Paul. He's having an outstanding night. Third down and a couple. I wonder with all that on if they're still warm. No. <laughs> no. Those, those band members really get me because they're not warmly dressed at all, and they had to get out there and play their instruments and march on this field, and both Oklahoma and Oklahoma State's bands were superb. They're in the locker room trying to get their lips off those horns. <laughs> oh, boy. Third down at about a yard and a half. Lydell Carr has got the first down. First down, Oklahoma, out across the 43-yard line. Lydell Carr is, is the man that's really done most of the damage as far as running. And here they come. Bulls with center. They just bury Washington. Lydell Carr gets up in there. Roberts, number six, makes a tackle. But it looks like he, he has the first time. Yes, he does. You know that was his 18th carry. Right. Backs being, right along. excuse me, backs being alternated in and out of there. Collins comes back in. Stafford comes back in. Derek Shepard comes back in a split end. Bach continues to run with 3.20 to go in the third quarter, and the Sooners lead by 10. Shepard way wide to the right, first down at the 43-yard line for Oklahoma. And this is Holloway. He's still got the ball, and it is knocked away from him. And I think the man was Leonard Jackson, number 84. Not that man there. He's downfield. Jackson's walking back out of the backfield of Oklahoma. There he is, number 84. And it is second down and 10. They're, they're just having such tremendous footing. I, I think there might have been a penalty on this play, Jim, and they're going to refuse it. I'm not sure. But every time that they come up to the line of scrimmage, they, they're all trying to get some kind of footing, just some kind of advantage, and it, it's very difficult. The offensive linemen are trying to set up, Jim, the pass block, and and all you got to do is get, get them started, and you just shove them right on back to the quarterback like they're on a sled. Well, I think they're going to take the penalty. They've not yet signaled what it is, but it must be a big one. That's well, holdings. There are, they are going to take it. Takes it all the way back inside the 30-yard line to the 28-yard line. The big penalties tonight have been against Oklahoma. 
All right, here's the pass now by Holloway, and the big man is going to hit it. It's Leonard Jackson, number 84. He just First swats down. the ball away with his arm. That ball had no chance. I bet his fingers hurt a little bit, too. First down, and they've got 25 yards to go. Jim, watch this when they come up the line. This is what we're talking about. Watch their feet. Look at these guys. Everybody's trying to dig in. Both offense and defense. The defense knows they got time to get set now. Looks like the pitcher on a pitcher's bound. Trying to do a little gardening. Reverse again. There's a reverse. Heath Jackson this time. Oh. got nowhere to go. And down he goes. O'Neill leading the way. And that's a loss on the play. It'll be second down and better than 25, 26, or 27 yards. Jim, when Keith Jackson came back, came back to run the play, he looked, and here's Warren Thompson, number 91, looking him right in the face. He said, oh, no. Watch. You'll see Thompson, 91, sitting there, just looking him right eyeball to eyeball. And he said, i got to get out of here. So when he cuts back in, you go back into Jackson and everybody else. Second down. Only one wide receiver, and he's wide <laughs> to the left. There they go again. And you can see the kind of shoes they're wearing tonight, trying to get some kind of traction on this turf. Damon Stellar's caught a pass is in there, and Holloway drops back and then falls down. See, that's the kind of night it is if you didn't know. Looked like a quarterback draw, and he started ahead and slipped at the 30-yard line, and now it is third down and about 23 to go. That definitely was a quarterback draw. That was called all the way. Less than two minutes to go, third quarter. Oklahoma leading by 10 in an effort to go 9-1-0. Oh, it is third down. Well, things are going on up at Syracuse. Let's check in with Jim Kelly. We'd like to welcome those of you who've been watching Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. The Orangemen of Syracuse right back in this football game have just taken the lead. They played the entire first half without scoring. Then a 41-yard field goal by Don McCauley. That cut the deficit to just three. And after a turnover against the Mountaineers, a very costly roughing the kicker call, and on the next play, a scoring strike for McPherson. is waiting. The point after by McCauley is up and good, and the Orangemen, who were shut out and trailed 6-0, have now taken a 10-6 lead. Let's go back and watch McPherson's 12th touchdown pass and watch Swades, who gets free and beats Lockwood. Don McPherson makes a great throw here. Swades has to concentrate on the ball, also on keeping his feet in bounds. There you saw his right foot down in bounds. A great catch to beat 41 Dave Lockwood. Watch McPherson's reaction after the catch by Scott Swades. Says, all right, we're back in front. So after trailing six to nothing, let's take another look at the catch by Scott Swades. His dad was an All-American here in 59. Swades uses his body. You can see his foot come down and bounds. A great catch. Not bad coverage by Lockwood. A great effort by Swades. The Orangemen are up by four. Let's go back to Jim Simpson. Okay, Jim, thank you. 44 seconds to go in the quarter, and it's 10 nothing Oklahoma. Oklahoma had to kick the ball away, so State has got the ball, and here's a quick pitch back, and they're going to throw, no, nope, Tillman can't throw the ball, and he's lost the ball. And they're lucky to get the ball back. Shanklin got the ball back. They may not get another playoff here, Jim. There's only there's 15 seconds in counting. Well, Hartley Dykes is the man who tried to throw the ball. He's been out hurt also. He was the all-everything down in Texas, and he's been hurt much of this year, listed as a wide receiver, but he can throw the ball, and almost disaster there on one of their trick plays. Well, no time left. Third quarter's over, Oklahoma by 10.
Simpson, Paul McGuire, Stillwater, Oklahoma, second down 17 for State. We begin the final quarter, and it's 10 nothing Oklahoma. Williams tries to set up and overthrows everybody except the safety man back there, and that, of course, is Sonny Brown. And he makes the first turnover for Oklahoma against Oklahoma State. As Sonny Brown intercepts his fifth of the year. Ronnie, excuse me, Ronnie Williams is waiting and setting up, and waiting for his man to break across the middle, and here comes Sonny Brown. The ball was so far overthrown. Just made sure he caught it. All right, we're just started the fourth quarter, and it's 10-0 Oklahoma. Break for Oklahoma now. They've dominated the game, but not too much on the scoreboard. They've got the only 10 points. They've had other chances. They've had the ball much more than Oklahoma State. And now again, they've got good field position. They've got to get something going. All the way, they've lost right. the football. And I think they fumbled it forward again. This time, not out of bounds, but it has been recovered. Recovered over there by Spencer Tillman. And the ball has been bouncing the right way for the Sooners tonight. They're doing exactly Oklahoma State defensively what they want to do. They're coming down the line of scrimmage. Leonard Jackson strips the ball. Spencer Tillman gets the ball. And the ball, every time they fumble, Jim goes forward and they're picking up yardage with it. It either goes out of bounds or it goes into the hands of an Oklahoma player. Second down and eight to go. Big in, guys. Del Carr again carrying the football. And you can see the man up top is the linebacker, James Ham. Others are with him down there at the bottom, including that man again, John Washington. And it is third down and long, about six to go. Oklahoma State, Jim, they've done a great job. They'll take a look at, at and the stats now. Rushing for Oklahoma, 53 yards. Or passing 53 yards but rushing in the third quarter they only had 10 yards rushing at 90 yards for Oklahoma State that's all uh, Thurman Thomas. Thurman Thomas in it Ronnie Williams has run a little bit on busted play Holloway got it and they got him down again he goes there's just no way for anybody to cut Ricky Adams and Leslie O'Neill were in on it and you are going to again see that James Ham is there. And Jackson. Lots of folks. It's fourth down. This is the, this is the thing that they're doing. Look, watch 99, Leslie O'Neill. He's sitting right there. He gets him by the legs. And then Adams, number 54, comes in and puts him down. Punt time. Mike Winchester is in. And for the moment, they only had 10 men on the field. And now... Vickers runs out and becomes the 11th man. They're up to snuff, and Moore's the deep man standing on the 10. Very short kick. Going for a fair catch, but look at it bounce back the other way and go out of bounds. They picked up baby 20 yards on that kick. That's all. Oklahoma leads fourth quarter by 10. <laughs> Cole, reporter for Dodge and Plymouth, built by Mitsubishi in Japan. By the U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. And by the financial professionals at Payne Weber Incorporated. Jim, we do have an interesting stat. Oklahoma State on first down, they're averaging 1.9 yards per try. Let's see what they do here. It is first down at the 18-yard line. And they give it to Thurman Thomas. And I think they're going to hold right about to that 1.9 as Tony Casillas. 92 you will be seeing getting up from down there because he's at the bottom of all that. 12.25 to go in the game. Herman Thomas with 93 yards. And 93 earlier, so it must be. Yeah, you know, no, lost a couple. no back this year has gained more than 65, and that was by Ron Shepard last week on a couple of reverses for Nebraska. He's got 93. That's tops against Oklahoma's defense all year long. But still, Oklahoma State is not on the scoreboard. And here's Ronnie Williams intercepted last time. Trying to get it out here this time and throwing it across there to Thurman Thomas and a couple of folks, including Kevin Murphy. Let's check in on Syracuse with Jim Kelly. Meeting. Thank you, Jim Simpson. We'd like to welcome those of you who've been watching Oklahoma and Oklahoma State in the snow bowl out there. We're indoors at the Carrier Dome. Lots of snow and powdery white stuff outside. Things have heated up. Ten 
unanswered points by Syracuse. They have taken a 10-6 lead. But the Mountaineers have marched right back. A very impressive drive. It's third and goal from the one. And the Orangemen jumped off sides. Now, were they drawn off sides? Did the All-American tackle Brian Joswiak jump? Well, let's check in with the referee and find out. The Carrier Dome has certainly come alive since those 10 straight points by the Orangemen. Well, that changes the play call considerably. Big mistake by the West Virginia offense. They've let this crowd back into the game. Looked like Joe's react jumped right there. They're all American. See Mike Timko very upset. Totally changes their play calling down here right now. Ball start, offense, third down. Ray Bauer, our referee, so instead of third and goal from the one, third and goal from the six. Now you would expect some kind of play option fake. Timko perhaps to the wide side. It's a situation where they're going to have to throw. A great effort by Mike Timko to get the ball to Brian McAllister, but you can see the Orangeman defense fired up. It was a late developing play designed to get the defense going to the right. Timko came back to the near side, but there are nothing but three orange jerseys facing Timko, and no receivers got out. I'm sure this was a play where Timko wanted to fake the run. There he falls down, makes a good throw before he's down. Cooper Gardner's going to come up and make a great stop. Timmy Green putting the pressure on Timko. So now it will be number eight. He has already had two field goals. Charlie Bauman has. This is a chip shot. It is up, and it is good, but... There's a penalty flag to be checked out. Charlie Bowman, who is connected from 29 and 27 yards, he missed a 30-yarder earlier, trying to draw the Mountaineers to within one. Let's check the penalty call. It's against West Virginia. Boy, from third and goal at the one, they are going the wrong direction. Well, penalties kill you. Also turnovers. We've seen a lot of turnovers tonight. They're a real costly penalty in third and one. Don Nealon, in his sixth season as the head coach at West Virginia, has led the Mountaineers to four straight bowl appearances. First, it was the Blue Bonnet Bowl, the Hall of Fame Bowl, the Gator Bowl, and, of course, that big upset win in the Peach Bowl. But this year, the Aloha Bowl said they didn't want West Virginia. It is a 15-yard penalty. Illegal participation, 15 yards, fourth down. So it is no longer a chip shot for Charlie Bowman. He came into the game 12 out of 16 in the field goal department. He's two out of three here tonight. And that chip shot has suddenly become a 38-yard effort. Dick McPherson of the Syracuse Orangemen now, he wants a timeout, and he wants to make some personnel substitution. So we have 14-12 left to go in this football game. Let's rejoin the Sooners and the Cowpokes. Here again, Jim Simpson and Paul McGuire. Thank you, Jim. Oklahoma State took a delay of game penalty and on third down and 12 hit Terry Weimer up the sideline. But Terry Weimer in turn was hit by safety man Sonny Brown and I want to tell you he really got hit and he dropped the ball and they had to kick it away. Now Williams puts this ball right on target. He hits Weimer right in the hands but Sonny Brown is right there. Look at this pass. It's beautiful. They're splitting the defensive secondary. Weimer's there. Watch what Brown does. As soon as he catches it, bang! Here comes the ball. Weimer went off not very quickly. No. He was down for a little while. But now it's Oklahoma's ball after the punt at the 46-yard line, first down. They lead by 10, 11.41 to go. Holloway hands off, and there's another good run by Spencer Tillman, who has, the, as we said, the game's only touchdown on a short burst back in the second quarter. 26 yards for Tillman on eight carries, second down and four to go from the 40-yard line of Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State tried a field goal by Brad Dennis, which was no chance at all to get to the goal post, let alone the end zone, as his left foot slipped as he went to kick it with his right. And that's as close as Oklahoma State has come all night long. Second down. All the way hands off to Lydell Carr, and Carr, look at that effort. Getting down and may have the first down at the 36-yard line. Maybe just a little bit shy. Jim, you know, looking at the stands here, the people on the other side of the field, furthest away from us, are all standing. The people on this side, what's left, they're all sitting. Why? Well, there's got to be something wrong with those seats. <laughs> I'll tell you what, those are aluminum. And you sit on those babies. Ooh. 
<laughs> Del Carr, he's hit a ball about 20 times tonight. Third down, about a half yard. Hope the ball's blown around. Don't ask me to do that Have again. To step in. The officials done a good job tonight. Very few penalties called, really. Cold. West Virginia understand you were watching them trying to add a field goal to their total. They have missed it. Third down. West Virginia upsetting Syracuse 10 6. Syracuse going to the Cherry Bowl and West Virginia left at home. They were left out of the NIT even last year in basketball. And here's Holloway trying to get the first down. He's got it as he gets across the 35 yard line. I'm sorry we've gotten that score wrong. It is Syracuse winning 10 6. So Syracuse will face Maryland, which had to really put on the heat yesterday after Virginia came within two points to pull away and win their game because Maryland and Syracuse will face each other in the Cherry Bowl up in Pontiac, Michigan. Ball at the 34-yard line. The winds continue to blow, and they did have all the freezing rain and all the snow they expected, but that's been gone since about halftime. And looking out to where the cars are leaving here in droves because of the frigid weather, it does not look as though they're having any trouble with the footing at all, or at least the tires. And that's good news because Oklahoma fans and the team have to go back tonight. Tillman carries the ball for half a yard or two, and that's about all as Krebs makes the stop. Nine and a half minutes to go. Oklahoma favored by better than two touchdowns, but conditions in Oklahoma State have held them to 10 points. And that great defense of Oklahoma, well, Thurman Thomas has done something about it, but nobody's come close to crossing the goal line against Oklahoma, which has added yet another quarter. They're now 19 quarters without a score against them. Touchdown. And there goes Holloway with one of his better runs of this half. He had some outstanding runs in the first half. And some outstanding passes, but still it's going to be third down and three or four yards to go. Ball just inside the 27-yard line of Oklahoma State. I think Holloway 48 yards on 16 carries, much below his rushing average of about six yards per carry. All right, here comes Holloway now. That This time they, they got a great block on the outside by number 88, Keith Jackson. He made he made the good block. And Mark Moore, he always wants his presence known. He went in there and grabbed Holloway. I think they wanted to keep him in bounds, let the clock keep going. The only injury that Paul and I have noticed, and they had to stop the game for Travis Simpson, the junior for Oklahoma, apparently hurt his left knee, and it has been Rick Yules in there since. And again, Tillman carries the ball, and not much, and Krebs stands him up. And it'll be fourth down on a couple of yards to go. The ball is on about the 25, and they've got to nudge it almost to the 23. This is four down there. Jim, they've got a 10-point lead. They're not about to, I don't think they're about to make a mistake trying to kick a field goal. If something happens, he slips, they block the ball and run it for a touchdown. They'll just go ahead and run the clock. And if they don't get it, so they've been able to stop Oklahoma State till now, and State would have to score twice to go ahead of them. And they're, they're only going to give the ball up at the 25 anyway. All right, 8.22 to go. Time has been called. Oklahoma leads Oklahoma State by 10. Note the start time is different Saturday night for our final regular CFA game on ESPN. 7 o'clock Eastern instead of 7.30. For the Young and Hawaii. Fourth down, Oklahoma at the 25-yard line of Oklahoma State. They've got about two to go to make the first down. And they give it to that man again, Lydell Carr, and there he goes, and he's got the first down. Carr all the way down to the 20-yard line. First down, Oklahoma. Clock is in their favor, scores in their favor, and they're moving the ball very well. That's a good call. Fourth down, again, they were only giving it up, but take a look at these guys. <laughs> They're shooting sparks out of there. That's Hudson, 79. He's getting the bigger, digging in better than anybody else. There they come. There's Carr. And that's just a great power run. Look at, he's through the line. He picked up five yards on the play. First down, 4.2 yards for Oklahoma, 1.9. There's Carr again. They figured that worked well. Why not get another four or five? And Lydell does. Down near the 16-yard line. 7.45 left. And every, excuse me, Jim, but every single play that they run up to the line of scrimmage, Oklahoma, you see that 25-second clock get down to, to within about four or five seconds before they snap the ball. 
It has been a frigid night in Stillwater. And the game has been well played with not as many turnovers as you would think. Although Oklahoma has put the ball on the ground a lot. It has gone forward and been recovered or out of bounds. They've thrown an interception. And so has Oklahoma State thrown an interception. And now James Jamel Holloway comes up and calls timeout. 7-18 to go on second down long. He calls timeout. We're in the fourth quarter. Oklahoma 10, Oklahoma State nothing. Let's update you on Georgia. Georgia Tech football after falling behind 10-6. This Lars Tate 15-yard TD gave Georgia the lead 13-10. Tack on three more to that on a Jacobs field goal, and it's Georgia 16-10 over Georgia Tech. Let's go back to Oklahoma. Thank you, George. This is one of those days. LSU and Tulane, Georgia, Georgia Tech, the game you just talked about. That's a dandy. We've got Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. And remember, Tennessee and Vanderbilt, and Tennessee won that one over there, cross-state rival. They go on to the Sugar Bowl for the first time in a long time. And our congratulations to Johnny Majors. I just thought of something. I'll pass on if this is not a big play. Speaking of Johnny Majors in Tennessee. 7-18 to go, second down, and six to go for Oklahoma on the 17-yard line. And that is Holloway carrying the ball after the fake to Lydell Carr. And they'll put him down shy of the first down thinking as I was Paul that Pat Jones is rumored to be going to Pittsburgh two days ago we saw Jackie Sherrill who coached Pittsburgh take Texas A&M to the Southwest Conference title and today we saw on television Johnny Majors whom Sherrill replaced at Pittsburgh take Tennessee to the Southeastern Conference title and now here's the man who's supposedly going to Pittsburgh and that is Pat Jones although nothing is written in stone yet right now he's worried about this game out onto the field comes Perry. I don't know how you thought of anything. I've got my brains frozen. Solid. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to left that off there. They can say solid. 6.40 to go. Third down. Four to go. Oklahoma leading by 10. Oh, no. No, not that time, Liddell. They got you. They got you. Let him go, John. Those two men have played a good game tonight. Liddell Carr, the fullback for Oklahoma and John Washington, the nose guard for Oklahoma State. Two of the outstanding performers on the field tonight, no question. I'll tell you one thing, if they weren't friends before this game, they are now. Because they know they, each other. Oh, yeah. Well, they'll be able to pick each other out of a crowd. They've been face to face all night. Oak field goal. Ball is inside the 15 yard line. Remember, Tim Lasher has hit a field goal, which was his 10th in a row. And now he will try for 11 in a row from 30 yards out. Ball is put down. He does not slip. He gets the ball up. And it gets it. And Sam is putting enough to get that ball through there. Look at Pat Jones stopping James Ham there. Then that's okay. We still get two of them. Right, Lasher. Lasher slips a little bit, but he... He, he, and he, and he does get that ball over the goalpost. It just does. Here comes Lasher. Watch his left leg. He slides, but he got the pop just before he That's slipped. A, see, he slipped after it was all over, whereas Brad Dennis slipped before he kicked the ball when he tried to kick one for Oklahoma State. But that is 11 in a row, and that is good for Tim Lasher. He's got another year up at Norman. Pat Jones, always a cheerleader on the sidelines, telling fellas, we only need two touchdowns to win this thing. But I guarantee you he hasn't come close to scoring one yet. Well, they need some kind of miracle against the number one defensive team in the nation and some of the worst conditions we have seen in recent times to play a football game in and on. Jim, I think, what, they only got to about the 20-yard line of Oklahoma once. Here you are. The no touchdowns allowed. None against Kansas, Missouri, Colorado, Nebraska. A little asterisk there because... Nebraska did get a touchdown, but it was on a fumble recovery. And then you're going to add three quarters and nearly 10 minutes tonight. Oklahoma State has not scored. So if they do not score, it'd be 20 consecutive quarters without the defense giving up a touchdown to the offense. And that tells you why they're the number one defense in the nation. And then tonight, Oklahoma winning will be their last nine in a row and 20 of the last 21 with Oklahoma State. They lead by 13 now. A uh, touchdown by Spencer Tillman and two field goals by Tim Lasher. Oklahoma State has managed to try a field goal and that was no good. That's as close as they've come. So 
Remember, this team in the picture now will face Penn State in the Orange Bowl New Year's night. And the other team, Oklahoma State, will get Florida State in the Gator Bowl. They'll keep this along the ground. Well, they try to get the handle on it. And it's picked up by Harry Roberts. And he puts it over to Mark Moore. And Moore is brought down across the way. Almost looked like a forward pass to me. But they say no. Roberts brings it out to the 35-yard line. The man's never out of this game. He's throwing, still throwing gadgets at him. There's your Oklahoma scoring drive. Ten rushing plays, no passes at all, and a 30-yard field goal. And almost six minutes off the clock. That's great. Here, here comes Roberts. He's a defensive end or linebacker. He's going to flip it. No, this was behind. That's good. You're right. That's all right. And Mark Moore, the All-American, and that's White bringing him down, number 14. Now, Oklahoma State has to try to gamble here if they're going to get anything at all. 5.40 to go and down by 13. And now we see David Tucker come up and kick some ice away and some snow away. So tells an official where to put the ball. Where were those guys all without their shirts on? Oh, don't talk about it. <laughs> Ronnie Williams back on first down. Setting up and throwing over the other way, and it is almost picked off across there by Kevin Murphy. The All-American defensive end who really drops off as a linebacker. And it's second down and ten. Williams just waited too long, and they, they're just waiting, waiting for people to clear out down the field. And when that doesn't happen, he's got to dump the ball. He's waiting for Kenneth Brown. Now he goes, throws back to this side on the outside over here to Thurman Thomas. And Murphy is right there waiting on the ball. Williams, two of 16 in this weather. He was 14 of 44 against Iowa State last week in terrible weather. Not snow, but winds and cold. And there's a, boy, he drilled that. It drilled it right past the intended receiver, Kenneth Brown. And on one hop to the Oklahoma defensive back. And suddenly it is third down. Well, Ronnie Williams is setting up now. He's, he's, this is just a straight drop back pass. No play action. Keeps his back ends to help protect. And he's trying to hit Brown coming across the middle. Watch, he's going to take a, just a little pop by Brian after he throws the ball. He's just upset with himself because he overthrew his target. He has got a gun for an arm, and Pat Jones says he's learning rapidly, but there are a lot of things he still sees in ball games that he's not seen before because he is so inexperienced. Here comes a bag again in the line of scrimmage. So let that go. And Williams will let go, throwing out to Thurman Thomas, who's not been in their offense recently and get some tough yards but it's going to be fourth down and a long way to go as Miniazzo puts him down they're sending out what appears to be the kicking team but you never know because we're in 506 to go I guess they will kick it away it's a long way to go but if they need a gadget and keep the ball this is the time because Oklahoma's shown great ability just to run time off the clock that is Sonny Brown back deep. He's made some big hits and an interception tonight. And here's Rich Thompson. And Sonny Brown will not touch his ball. I, no, I don't think he will. Oh, he could have run. Yeah, he faked as though he were going to and then did not. And now they're going to get this kind of kick that the Oklahoma has been getting. They'll start Oklahoma down from about the three-yard line. But the Sooners, well, they got the football and they've got the lead. 13 to nothing on two field goals and... The touchdown run by Spencer Tillman. Last year, 27 yards out early in the second quarter to make it 3-0. And then on a good drive, after having been intercepted, they didn't throw the ball this time. Tillman took it in from four yards out, also in the second quarter, and the half ended 10-0. And just recently, here in the fourth quarter, you saw last year get his 11th consecutive field goal, a 30-yard attempt. And it's 13-0. All right, there's 4.34 and the clock has stopped. And I, I can imagine Holloway will not be flipping this ball around. It's, this is going to be direct handoffs, and I know that Oklahoma State got to know that. You think Lydell Carr will get the ball? Well, Holloway keeps it himself that time. Didn't even hand it off. And why not? They'll keep that 25-second clock going. It was two seconds on the clock when the snap took place. Barry Switzer about to win his 124th game at Oklahoma. But Wilkinson won 145 in his year there. Which will be 79-10-1 in the Big 8. And 39-6 in Big 8 games on the road. 
and is on his way back to the Orange Bowl. And they're still thinking national championship. They want to get SMU next week and then beat Penn State. Perry's in there, the fullback spot now where, where Carr was. And that's Spencer Tillman, I think. Oh, yeah, and much more, I know, has got it. Yeah. Number Staff is the other guy that's in there. No, excuse me. Who is it? It's hard to see. Stell, 27 in the backfield. See, and you wanted to do play-by-play. -play. I can't find anything. <laughs> <laughs> 341 left. And we'll take a break. Oklahoma leads. Oklahoma State, 13 to nothing. And we'll come back in a moment. Third down and five, Oklahoma. The ball on their own eight-yard line, but they're up by 13, and the clock is all in their favor. Three minutes and 41 seconds to go. They're about to nail down their... Ninth win of the year against just one loss. That to Miami. And Oklahoma State will be eight and three should this hold up. We got a few cold ones. Now that is Perry fighting in the Lydell Carr spot. And it's going to be fourth down. And time has been called by Oklahoma State. They want to get the ball back and get on the board, and then you never know what would happen. Onside kick. Ball bounced the wrong way or the right way, depending on your point of view. Well, in comes Mike Winchester to kick the ball away again. I wouldn't want to try to make a living scoring 14 points against Oklahoma with 334 remaining. Especially when they're in their 20th quarter at the moment of allowing no offensive scores at all. 20 consecutive quarters. And then a bad ball club they've been facing. Nebraska. Does that look a little strange? You've got Oklahoma out there and they're all lined up for a punt and there's nobody out there to face. <laughs> there is a timeout by Oklahoma State. That's why they left. Might be putting a little gadget on here. One man is deep, that is more. Mike Winchester to kick it away. Now, there they go, and if they're, and I'm sure they will, they just started the clock. They'll let it go down. Winchester about to punt for the seventh time, but he can wait another 10 seconds if he wishes, but he's not going to. He's going to kick the ball away. That very short kick, very short kick, and bounces back the other way, and Oklahoma State will have the ball at the 27-yard line of Oklahoma. That was a 17-yard kick by Winchester. Jim, and you know what happened, don't you? Mark Moore, they just touched the ball. That's not down. Mark Moore picked up the ball and started to run with it. But it's marked there. Next week, remember, Paul and I will be west of here, out in, <laughs> oh, considerably, in Honolulu, Brigham Young University at Hawaii, and our start time will be 7 p.m. Eastern time. Is it Bosco and come. Yes, sir? Hawaii or Hawaii? <laughs> Either way, I'm okay. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> well, he's back to throw. Trying to make something happen in a hurry. Flings it out here, and it's up in the end. Intended for Timmons, the fullback. And one of the Oklahoma down linemen got his hands up and knocked it away. It is second down and 10. That stops the clock with 3.18 to go. He had Weimer going straight down the middle of the field, and he was open. You know what? I was just thinking about Jim. This should have been a great game to have some barefooted kickers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was going to say, if you can find my toes before we get the game next week, I would appreciate having them. They are really cold. It is a, it's a tough night, but the players that are having it a the toughest of all, of course, because they're the ones getting hit and being hit. There's Williams pitching back, and that is Thurman Thomas, and Thomas is knocked out of bounds. Shy of the first down. It'll be third down and about four to go. White, Derek White's the man that knocked him out, got over there. 99 yards for Thurman Thomas. He said they'd be in the ball game. They're in the game. They're down by 13, however, and have not come close to scoring a touchdown. And as we said, Oklahoma's been averaging giving up 75 yards to a team. And the most anybody ever got against them before was 65. Thomas has gotten his 99. But to no avail on the scoreboard. Only 54 against Iowa State last week. The big offensive player of the year. Ball thrown out here. Unable to hold on to it as Dillard, the tight end. JR just couldn't hold it. And it's fourth down. That wind is really blowing. J.R. Diller tried to 
catch it with one hand and just knock the ball down, and that wasn't going to happen. You, you got to put both hands up there and cradle it in your chest. You imagine how slippery that ball is when it gets cold. It's like trying to grab a bar of soap. Williams, 5 of 21 for 32 yards. Weimer's out to the left. He really got a picture pass thrown right to him, but then Sonny Brown leveled him, and the ball went flying, and it was incomplete. Fourth down, last gasp, perhaps, for Oklahoma State. The pitch back. That worked before, and he's lost the ball, and Oklahoma's got it anyway. Didn't get the first down, fumbled the ball. The Sooners have it. They think they got the game with 3.02 left. They can do a lot of running out here of the clock. Each team has one timeout left. Thurman Thomas does lose the ball here. This is a quick pitch. They ran this a couple of plays ago. They try to get it real quick to Thomas. Timmons is out in front trying to block, but there's a great tackle by Jones, number 50. The ball goes down. White falls on it. Oklahoma's ball, 3-0-2. Oklahoma State only one timeout. The Sooners only one timeout, and I know they're not going to use one. They'll just run off this clock if they can. Hard-fought game under tough conditions. Perry remains your fullback, and he's the man that's going to get most of the work there for Lydell Carr, and he's doing the same kind of job that Carr is. He wedges out five yards to the 25-yard line. Well, the two teams in the Gator Bowl have lost to the cross-state rivals today. Florida State lost to Florida. They will play Oklahoma State, which is losing right now to Oklahoma. But they'll have a little bit different, different conditions down there, and I guarantee you, Oklahoma State has a lot of things up their sleeves, and we all know what Bobby Bowden does with Florida State's offense, all kinds of things. So that should be a good game. And it could be for the national championship, Penn State and Oklahoma in the Orange Bowl on New Year's night. Not much there for Stell. Well, it's Perry. Nope, that's not Stell at all. That's Stell was over there with him, but that's Stafford that was with the, that was carrying the ball. Stell, I guess, was in the vicinity blocking. 2:11 to go. Time has been called on the field, and it's 13 to nothing. Oklahoma leads Oklahoma State. Barry Switzer's team has given up 100 yards to Thurman Thomas, and that's the most, as we said, that anybody's gained against Oklahoma all year. But this is the first time in Thurman Thomas's career that he's gained 100 yards that Oklahoma State will have lost the game. When he gains 100, they win. Tonight, it's not the case. They're running in because something came onto the field. That is not a penalty. It is third down for Oklahoma, four yards to go. They got the ball on their own 26-yard line. And they lead by 13 with two minutes, 11 seconds to go. You know what I love about here? Uh, the other places they throw things on the field, we have not seen one orange thrown on this field, nor one alligator. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look. Everybody's moving down there. Pope, I think, is the man that jumped and those give him five yards there as the flag goes down. The Hartford group, most valuable players of the game. John Washington for his defensive play at the nose guard spot tonight. 12 tackles tonight. He gets our vote, and the man that he's been tackling most of the time is not a man who scored a touchdown that John Washington battled with, but Lydell Carr. He carried the ball 24 times, many of them in clutch situations, 78 yards, and those two fellows who got to know each other very well tonight are our Hartford group most valuable players. They are the best of friends. <laughs> Third down now, uh, nearly 10 to go. Third and nine. And Holloway hands off, and not much there. As Jim Krebs stops him up. And we're down to two minutes, Jim, and here's the situation where you did, well, it really doesn't make any difference because except for that one drive that Oklahoma State had, they were, have not really been in, in any kind of a position to score. Perry never came close. He only got a yard or so to getting the first down. And so now Mike Winchester will come back in. He's had a, a lot of punts tonight, as has Rich Thompson. Now you can see when those bags go flying through the air, I guess people have their feet in them. You can see how hard that wind is blowing. It is blowing right into Winchester's face. And he's got another bad punt here. 
But you can't blame the ball bouncing around. It's going to be picked up by Moore. And he's got it at the 40-yard line. Jim, he had to pick it up because the ball bounced off of Donnie Brown's back, number four. So he had to go up and pick up the ball. Heads up play by Moore. Remind you again that next Saturday evening, there is Janelle Holloway. You will see a lot of him in time to come. Next Saturday evening, 7 o'clock Eastern Time, Brigham Young and Hawaii from Hawaii. And it'll be a pleasure. Yay, Hawaii. Going over there with the good friend Zord Preston, Midge Preston, on Maui. You do have a tough. Yeah. Williams looking for Thomas. Out of the backfield, cannot hold on to it. And it is second down and ten. That stops the clock. Vickers was in on Tom, on uh, Williams. He just really didn't have a chance to get enough on the ball. He took a shot afterwards. 113. What does this say? <laughs> you read it. Some, as soon as pulverized, something. Looper is wide to the left. And Brown to the right. It is second down 10. No blitz Vickers a safety man. No blitz this time. Went in back to throw and throws it too hard for Thomas to handle. Really drilled it. Thomas put up one hand and that was it. And it is third down and 10. Look at this. 236 to 131. And 100 yards of that on the ground was Thurman Thomas. Whoa. 108 to warp. <laughs> tell you what, I tell you, the Sooners have probably said, get those buses warmed up for that ride back to Norman, Oklahoma. They don't want to get in there when it's cold. Third down and 10 to go. Here's Williams. Gets the ball away and throws it. Almost intercepted. And again, it was tended for Thurman Thomas across the line of scrimmage. But it and was thrown behind him. Yeah, way behind him. Jimmy had no chance to get the ball. It's fourth down and 10. It has been a long, tough night for these ball players, these coaches, and these fans, and these bands. And by the way, Paul, I'm sure because they had a big snow warning, we got a lot of snow, which you can see on the field, and Pat Jones is standing in. But I don't see the big three to six inches. Maybe that's later tonight they're talking about, or in a different part of the state of Oklahoma. Fourth down. State needs a first year to have any semblance of hope. Delay a game. Delay a game, it's going to cost them again, because you know that when... Oklahoma gets the ball, they can just put the knee down a couple of times, and there's no way you can stop them. No way at all. No timeouts left. The two field goals by Lasher, Delay the four-yard run by Spencer, Spencer Tillman. Down. Pat Jones, we've seen Pat coach many games. He is into every game, whether he's down by plenty or up by plenty at the very final moments. Lindbrook is coming at fullback now, his first appearance. For our Oklahoma State, and it's fourth down and five. They've got to do it here. Check that fourth and 15. Williams is going to run. Now he's going to throw, and he threw it right into the hands of an Oklahoma man, Miliazzo. He couldn't hold on to it. Barry Switzer knows it. That's it. They can just run out the clock now. 54 seconds to go. And no way for State to stop the clock at all. And the fans realize it. They're on their way out. And look at Jones. Battling to the last instant. This is Barry Switzer's reaction on the fourth down play. Yeah, he's in this game. That's it. He knows. Now it's ours. It's 13 nothing. You're shut out. And we held you to 131 yards. And undefeated in the Big 8 with SMU next Saturday afternoon up in Norman, Oklahoma. And then they'll get ready after a week or so to go down to Orange Bowl land to meet Penn State. You think Joe Turner and Rupert are watching tonight? Oh, yes, indeed. Well, but it's, it's really... Can't even, see even, much here. Yeah, but you, when we talked to, to Coach Switzer before the game, and 
he just he, he said, Paul, he said, we're not going to do anything different than we normally do. We, you know, we we got here by doing the things that we do best, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to run, and we'll throw a little bit. But tonight, it might dictate us just running the ball, but they did throw a few passes. Second down and 12 to go. They'll put the knee down again, and once they do, it is all over. Take a pass with the knee down, and that's it, folks. There's no way to stop it now. Nine in a row for Oklahoma of Oklahoma State. 20 of the last 21. And they will be 7-0 and oh in the Big 8 and 9-1 and one on the year. Oh, Oklahoma State. Smith dives inside the five. This is the Harvey Smith Show. We'd like to welcome those of you watching Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. An incredible performance by Mike Timko and Harvey Smith. Third and 25. Smith comes up with a 40-yard reception. Third and 29. He comes up with a 37-yard reception. There's no and one it's on now first and goal inside the five-yard line. The Mountaineers were out of this football game. They were backed up 75 yards from Pater. They trailed by four. A field goal meant absolutely nothing. And now, with 40 seconds left to go, West Virginia has a first and goal at the Syracuse five-yard line. And we go back, David Hum, to that missed field goal by Syracuse with eight and a half minutes left to go. And we talked about how many times a team had an icing field goal, missed it, and the other team came back. Watch Harvey Smith here. This was a diving catch by Smith inside the five to bring us to where we are right now. A key reserve, number 88 is, last year. He's on the receiving end of many Mountaineer passes, but none as crucial, Dave Hump, as the last three here in the last 60 seconds. Harvey Smith, a tremendous fourth quarter, but remember the last series, Robert Drummond, the running back for Syracuse, ran the ball out of bounds rather than getting down and having the clock to stay running. Dick McPherson must be shell-shocked right now. He had this game on ice. It's third and 29. Let's go back for our Oklahoma viewers now and watch this catch. In traffic, double team. All they needed on that play was 29 yards. They got 37. Harvey Smith, maybe we can get a tight shot of him as his helmet off back at the 15-yard line. The young man out of Monroeville, Pennsylvania, who's had three key catches on this drive. He's majoring in business at West Virginia. Well, he has done some major business here in the last 60 seconds or so. 40 seconds left to go. It would salvage the Mountaineers' season. Flood formation, ride to the right. Kempko fires, touchdown! Grannis Bell! Watch Grannis Bell on the right of your screen, beats, beats Cooper Gardner. Big touchdown there. There was a little pick play there on the right, right with the motion player. I saw Tom Gray come in motion. What's the great throw to Grannis Bell? A very important extra point. It's a two-point lead right now. Charlie Bauman can make it three. He does. 13 to 10, West Virginia. Watch the sixth-year coach, Don Nealon, and his reaction as his quarterback, Mike Timko, threaded the needle. Says, okay, you folks at the Aloha Ball, take that one. Don Nealon, former coach at Bowling Green, wanted to be a professional baseball player. Admired Doit Perry, who was the head coach at Bowling Green, saw games like this one. Saw Doit Perry affecting the lives of young men. Decided instead to be a football coach. Learned his craft under Doit Perry. Then was an assistant with Bo Schembechler, said those two men have been the most influential on his college coaching career. A great coach at Bowling Green with the Falcons, a very successful coach with the Mountaineers at West Virginia, four straight bowl appearances. An incredible drive by Timko, 75 yards in seven plays, but he came up with a 37-yard reception on third and 29. He came up with another 29-yard reception on third and 25. All 
to Mr. Smith. Harvey Smith made three great catches, and then they went out to number one. Grant is Bell on his little slant in post pattern for the go-ahead score. Scott Schwades, who is already the Hartford Insurance most valuable player of the game for Syracuse, is back deep, along with Tom Kane, the young freshman. Bowman would like to keep it away from Schwades. Dribbles it on the ground. It's picked up by the up back. That is number 39, Chris Barnes, and Barnes stays inbound. Should have gone out of bounds to stop the clock. 31 seconds left. Now keep in mind the great cannon of McCauley. Clock, of course, stops on the change of possession, but still, had he gone out of bounds, the offense would have had a little bit more time. They need to work it down in the field goal range. And remember, Syracuse has no timeouts left. 31 seconds. They've got a long way to go. Here's McCauley warming up. They've got to get fairly close. From the 36-yard line of Syracuse, McPherson. Looks over the middle. Dancing feet. He's got Seattle. Seattle pulls it in at the 38. First and 10, Syracuse. He beat Dave Lockwood again. Mike Seattle, the senior, 6'4", 217, out of Springfield, Pennsylvania. 23 seconds. They'll respot the chain, and then the clock will start. Now, McCauley's longest career field goal is 51 yards. They need only another 10 or 15 yards, but they need time to get McCauley out. They're out of timeout. Nick Pearson fires. He's got Schwedes, and Schwedes cannot hang on at the 20-yard line. Stacy Smith up over the back of Schwedes, batted the ball down. Watch Scott Schwedes. He's going to run a post and corner pattern. Here's the throw by Don McPherson. Stacy Smith is going to make a good play, but still a catchable ball by, by Schwedes. Stacy Smith, a good job. You see Schwedes make those catches. Not a good job, a great job. He strips Schwedes of the football. Second and ten. McPherson can run. Fires downfield, and he misfires. It was a misread between the quarterback and the wide receiver. Schwedes, and it was a bad read. I think Swades gave Don McPherson the look like he was going to run deep. He ended up coming back to the ball, and, and McPherson threw the ball over him. Now you've got a problem. Nine seconds left to go. 13-10. There is McPherson, the head coach. There is Don Nealon across the way. Their wives are good friends. Mary Ann Neely, Nealon, Sandra McPherson. They'd rather be shopping than root against their other... McPherson looks for everything, looks for Siano, incomplete with three seconds left. Do you like the play call? No, I didn't like the play call. The, the quarterbacks were off right there. It wasn't bump and run. They've run the out all night by pressing deep. But shouldn't you run a down and out, throw it, try to pick up 10 yards and get your place kicker closer for the field goal try? Plus it stops the clock. That's You really only run that fade with the corners back. They were back that time. They could have run the out. The ball had to be thrown in the end zone. If he catches it inside the 10 and he's down, time is going to run out. This will be a 55-yard field goal try. McCauley's longest is 51 yards. We'll look from the end zone. This is to tie up the football game. It's on its way, and it is no good. Two best friends will meet at midfield. Don Nealon and Dick McPherson. There they are. They were assistants together at the University of Cincinnati. Their wives go shopping together. In fact, the coaches said the wives are probably closer than they are. They talk on the phone. A big, long-distance bill. Watch McCauley's reaction. Is it long enough? He puts his leg into it. You saw the cannon-like effort, and it is, it is, it is. It is no good. Nervous coach over on the Mountaineer sideline. There you are, folks. A big upset. The Mountaineers came in about a touchdown underdog. There are the two Americans, Timmy Green and Brian Josiak. Final by three, the Mountaineers.
back with more after these messages. Oh, I'm good more. The Syracuse Orangemen lost three of nine fumbles in the first half. Two Charlie Bauman field goals for the Mountaineers made it six nothing at halftime. Don McCauley connected from 41 yards out to slice the deficit in two. Then Don McPherson, a 20-yard pass, put the Orangemen up by four. But then, in the last minute of the game, Mike Timko unloads right there to Gratis Bell, and the Mountaineers take a 13-10 lead. On the game's last play, Don McCauley missed from 55 yards up what would have been the winning, or make that the tying field goal. Two best friends embrace a good game here at Syracuse. For Dave Hum, I'm Jim Kelly. Let's rejoin Jim Simpson. Thank you, Jim and David. An exciting game for you folks up in the Carrier Dome tonight, and our congratulations to Don Nealon and West Virginia for pulling it out at the last moment. Syracuse is going on to the Cherry Bowl. Our two teams here played in this kind of winter storm, Paul McGuire. Oklahoma's heading for warmer climates to the Orange Bowl. Oklahoma State to the Gator Bowl. They slipped and slid, but Oklahoma is dominating, and BYU and Hawaii is coming up next Saturday night at 7 o'clock in Hawaii. I'll see you there. I can't wait to get there, but the one thing that we talked about at the beginning of this game, Jim, the, one, the team that has the best footing that stays on top of the surface, they're the team that's going to win, and that was Oklahoma. But again, they did it defeat defensively, but Thurman Thomas did get 100 yards. And for the first time, a guy back got 100 yards against Oklahoma, and for the first time, Thurman Thomas gained 100 yards, and Oklahoma State did not win. Final score here. As the Cowboys were shot down by their cross-state rivals, the Sooners of Oklahoma, Oklahoma 13, Oklahoma State nothing. Good night from Stillwater. Coming up next, the College Football Show. Just finished my first day at a great new job. You know where I found it? Here, in the National Business Employment.